Hi, everyone. Welcome and good morning. This is Ramola D. We are here once again at Technogram Fighters Forum. Um, this is Thursday, the 29th of March, 2018. And I'm here this morning with Dr. Catherine Horton and with Karen Stewart, NSA whistleblower. And um, we're very pleased to be here this morning again. So sorry we're late. Um, you know how these things work out at our end, war meetings and so forth, and so much happening, so much to report, uh, which we'll get right into. Um, just to open the conversation as usual, I'd just like to say to everybody new who's watching, um, we are human rights advocates who are here to report surveillance abuse, massive surveillance abuse, and the use of electromagnetic and sonic and scalar weapons on the bodies of civilians, both in the United States and in Europe, and literally all over the world, uh, conducted apparently by the One World Government, which many people may not know exists, but it appears to exist, run by the One World Agency, no doubt run by the One World Bank. So um, that's sort of the state of affairs currently in the world today. And, um, you know, to go right into it, one of the things I wanted to talk about, and, you know, hopefully we'll, we can have an open conversation. Uh, my phone was buzzing, sort of trying to take a look at it. But anyway, I'm going to ignore it for now. Um, so one of the things I'd like to talk about is this incredible disclosing whistleblowing interview I did with FBI whistleblower Gerald Sosby who is reporting nearly 30 years of being assaulted, harangued, harassed by the FBI after he left the FBI. Now, he was in the FBI, um, I think, in the late 60s and 70s. Okay, well, actually, he's also a U.S. Army veteran. He was in Vietnam uh, for, you know, for the whole period of time that, um, you know, we were in Vietnam, I guess. Uh, he was a combat veteran and um, he was in the FBI. And after he left the FBI, he went to law school and um, reports that he was harassed by the FBI starting there. He was targeted by the FBI way back in time. And, um, you know, so we didn't actually go into the story of how and why he got targeted. But what we did do was have a conversation on his understanding of how the FBI is involved in the targeting of thousands of people, not just in the U.S., but also around the world. Innocent. S sorry? Innocent people. Yes, innocent people. So let's actually underline that as Karen rightfully points out, you know, we are speaking about innocent people, upstanding people, outstanding people in communities. We are talking about civic minded people, community rights activists, people who speak out against corruption and crime, people in their own communities standing out in some way or the other, you know, these are the people who are being targeted. So one you has to ask the very primary question, why are good people being targeted? Why are good people being persecuted in America? And think about it. Weren't good people persecuted openly in, let's see, communist China and communist Russia? And isn't open per persecution of good people related to communist tyranny and despotism? And isn't it related to criminality? So those are the questions we need to ask. Why is the FBI targeting innocent people? Because that is exactly what is happening. And this is what Gerald Sosby has reported. They are targeting people that, and literally both of us in our conversation, we're trying to understand why they would do this. Why are they targeting upstanding people? You know, why are they targeting people who are from the agencies? Because one thing Gerald said was they seem to target people who've been, um, you know, who are retirees or um, who have who are from the agencies. And so I mentioned from my understanding of Karen's experience and from my understanding of someone else's experience who's spoken to me recently who's from the, you know, who's a retiree of the US Army, that there are people who have spoken out against corruption in-house within their organizations, within the NSA, within the US Army, and then they get targeted. And um, you know, so we were trying to understand that how on earth or people who've done an EEOC lawsuit, who are filing suit for discrimination of some kind. Those are the people who suddenly come under the gun, right, Karen? I think that oh, yeah. was um, your experience. Well, the Daily Beast just uh, a few, maybe a couple of weeks ago, did an article about the whistleblower lawsuits at the EEOC and how 
all but one from 2010 were decided in the favor of the government, despite massive evidence of corruption in all of the lawsuits. The only one that hasn't been decided yet is mine. So that is in the process of being reviewed by Judge Lawrence Gallagher. We'll see if he is um, honest or whether he's going to basically toe the line and ignore all the evidence and go in favor of the government. We'll see. Well, I think, that I, think, is so I think if he goes against you, Karen, his career will be over because we're, we're about to move on. I mean, the, the, the pedophile clear out is already in full swing with the mass arrests, but we're about to move on the judges and the entire legal system here in Switzerland, thankfully as well. And hopefully Gerhard Ulrich is um, you know, going to join us. He, he just had a, an operation, but um, you know, some friends spoke to him and he's fine and he's out of the hospital. So the entire judicial corruption is now going to be taken, uh, taken up worldwide as a major campaign. And I think any judge that sides with the cartel will go down with the Crown Corporation. Literally, their money masters are bankrupt and they're certainly morally bankrupt and they will go down. I am I so, so pleased. I'm so pleased to hear that, uh, Catherine, because, you know, in fact, Gerald was talking about judges. Now, he was talking about federal magistrate judges associated, you know, with the federal is where he is, but elsewhere as well. And he said that, you know, because he's a lawyer, he became a judge. He said he actually was inside the haloed halls of these uh, courts and he kind of rubbed shoulders with these judges. So he's got real insider information here. And he said, and this is really interesting, he said he's never encountered such petty minded, ridiculous, and corrupt men as he has found serving judgeships in these courts. Okay. And he said one or two of them are good and, you know, they understand what, what's going on with him, but most of them are corrupt. So here is the FBI and I am forced to say openly from FBI whistleblower Gerald Sosby that the FBI is clearly a criminal organization which is very, very corrupt. And what they are doing is they are going to these corrupt judges getting these wrongful court authorizations on various people, pretty much anyone they like. Gerald says, if they don't like you for any reason, if they've taken a dislike to you. And you know, how do people take a dislike to you when they don't know you? They don't know you, but their little informants in the community know you. You see, you cross paths with their informants. And I think that's what happened to me. I think I crossed paths with an FBI informant. And so these informants rush off and tell them, oh, look, there's Romola D. Talks too much. Take her out. So well, off they I, go. go I ahead. would argue they don't know you. You know, there's just because you make a remark they don't like doesn't mean they know you. That is a very good point. Obviously, they don't know me, Karen. They don't know of the huge years of, you know, community service and volunteering I've been doing. Uh, if you look at my resume, it's padded with community service and volunteering. They don't know of my 17 years of teaching creative writing at Washington, D.C. area universities. They don't know that I'm teaching art classes to children. And they don't know that I'm, you know, what kind of person I am. You're right. They don't know me. They don't know me. But this one FBI informant on one particular occasion crosses paths with me because through his friend who had one discussion with me on the uselessness of childcare fees at my daughter's school makes the conclusion that I talk too much because I merely expressed my views that we really didn't need to charge for babysitting at a parent-teacher conference when our children who are Montessori trained and really smart can sit outside the conference with a book and, you know, uh, entertain themselves for an hour while the parents are inside talking to the teachers. And this little remark gets blown out of proportion by the treasurer of the school board, whom I speak to, and she rushes off and tells the school board president, who is, I find out later after a FOIA request, um, through various means, is the corporate attorney working at a massive defense contractor, right? Which engages in blood supplies, Hemoneutics Corporation. Whoa! Something, something to do with blood, okay? Something to do with equipment dealing with blood. Massive contract with the DOD, regularly renewed contract, okay? So, 
tell me if this is not clear evidence or covert, of course, covert trail, covert trail evidence of trafficking into military projects, non-consensual military experimentation projects via FBI informants and via the FBI. Yeah. So here you have, so, you know, this is what I think in my case, this is what happened. You had an FBI informant. You had the FBI working as Gerald Sosby now relates to me, using magistrates uh, judges to pull out court authorizations to, to, to state, God knows what they've stated on that. You know, what do they state? Known as suspected terrorist? Am I on their KSD, their known as suspected terrorist list? After doing art classes and uh, volunteering at my daughter's school and running bead workshops there? <laughs> you know, so is this what they are doing? So that's what, those are the kind of questions we need to ask. Eat our cases. Every since has been wrongfully targeted by this criminal agency. There is a trail, I am certain, that leads in this way to trafficking. Because I think we have all been trafficked. We've been trafficked into non-consensual experimentation projects. And now, because, the, because of that trafficking trail, there is a money trail. There's a money flow going on. And so the FBI, and this is why they come frequently into my neighborhood and frequently revive the interest of the neighbors in re-monitoring and re-surveilling me as I leave and come back, which they're doing right now these days, by the way, again. So, uh, and the neighbors, the really foolish and pathetic and mind taken over neighbors are simply complying when seriously, after four years, I mean, with base intelligence, can they not figure out that there's something very wrong here? So I would, I would like to state right now for the record, the FBI is engaging in anti-American activities in our neighborhoods. These are anti-patriotic and anti-American activities, and they are self-serving and self-aggrandizing activities connected to lucrative military contracts. And it's called as sedition. A thank you. Thank you, Karen. It's sedition. It's, it's deep state treason. It is absolute treason. And they have no right to do it. They are defaming, and they're doing it, and they're only getting away with it, as Gerald Sosby has said, through defamation. They are defaming, slandering, libeling us. So it is time to fight back and it is time to stand up and say to the FBI, your life is over. Your reign has ended. Your wrongful, your criminality, your corruption and your behavior to us is at an end. You cannot do this to us. You know, we, we're not going to stand for it. We're not going to be silent. We are simply not going to be silent. And I have another story to relate, but I'm going to let some other people talk for, over here because I'm so upset about everything that's been happening lately. But this whistleblowing by Gerald Sosby was fantastic. And I have to bring him on again. I know that particular video was horribly, horribly tampered with and sabotaged, of course, by the FBI. Who else, right? Um, but we're going to come back and we're going to do more. And I'm going to do a massive amount of reporting on the FBI. I can assure everybody. Good. And I'm going to point out very quickly something that we discussed before, before the program went on, that the InfraGuard and other neighborhood Nazi organizations, I am calling useful idiots. And the historic reference for this is that when the Bolsheviks were trying to overthrow the Russian government, which was a monarchy run by Tsar Nicholas and his family, Tsar Nicholas decided that he wanted Russia to be to transform from a total monarchy to a to a um, constitutional monarchy, meaning that he and his family would be figureheads the same way that they uh, the monarchy is in England. OK, he had that intention. OK, that panicked the Bolsheviks, because if they couldn't portray him as this despot, then they would never be able to grab power for the communists. OK. So the Bolsheviks, who actually were a minority, called themselves Bolsheviks, which is from the worst Russian word Bolsha, meaning majority. OK, so they played with the peasants minds by fooling them into thinking this um, fringe minority group was actually the majority. They tricked the peasants into following them, overthrowing Tsar Nicholas just before he essentially gave the peasants their freedom and brought them into the modern world. So they tricked the peasants into murdering 
Tsar Nicholas and his family and turning over the reins of power to the communist Bolsheviks. The, and the Bolsheviks, like I said, called these peasants, again, useful idiots. That is what the Infraguard and all of these um, neighborhood Nazis are. They are useful idiots because they are subverting the American Constitution and they are destroying the country. They're doing the same thing that the peasants did. They are going to doom themselves, their children, their grandchildren, and who knows how many more generations to a totalitarian state that they are serving because they're so stupid as to not understand that they are trampling the constitutional rights of their fellow Americans. There is a reason we have a constitution. There is a reason that the founding fathers said, no, you can't make secret accusations against people and use secret testimony and secret evidence because that opens the way for lies. That opens the way for falsehoods and um, taking action against somebody that they don't even know what they're accused of, so they can't defend themselves and they cannot get the truth into the ears of these idiots. So that is why we don't do it that way. But guess what? You are subverting the entire American system because you are traitors. You are subversives and traitors. And I'm all for shooting subversives and traitors after a trial. So this is a warning, you guys. You know, this is a civil war by cowards. And you are on the, on the side of the cowards. Because you cannot say to these people's faces, to our faces, you cannot tell us what we're accused of because you know in your hearts it's false. But you're making money off of it and you're feeling like you have some kind of importance when you don't. You're not important people. You're despicable people. You're nothing. And if you weren't in large groups uh, against one person, you couldn't accomplish anything. So your day is coming. It is absolutely coming because the same technology that you're using against us, we're using this type of technology to get our message out to all of America, as many as we can. And these episodes and other episodes people are doing, um, they're history. And they're going to be proof of hundreds of thousands of people who are saying the same thing. It's not an abnormality. You're not going to say that every single one of us is delusional. You're not going to say that 500,000 or a million people that you have been picking on, abusing, torturing, and murdering, that we were delusional. No, this is a coward's civil war, and we will out you because you are, you are vermin, and you need to be removed from society one way or the other. And those are my thoughts on it. I, I'm so glad you actually brought up, um, you know, the, the Romanovs, so the Tsar, the, the Tsar of Russia, because uh, I, it's my take that um, the cartel that has been with us, some say, since the Little Ice Age, this uh, huge uh, organized crime network, you know, known as the syndicate and the cartel, and as I say, headquartered in Switzerland, as Sean Foss uh, educated me, uh, it actually, it, it, the entirety of communism is its brainchild. Sorry, I'm just getting feedback. I just wanted to say one thing, because Lenin, for example, was here in Zurich, there's, I can show you where the home of Lenin was. So when he was networking with the cartel, he, this is where he started. And then he was planted. He was shipped into Russia with an entire cartel takeover plan. You know, it was all mapped out by the bankers, the banking cartel here in Zurich. And it was a takedown operation. And what this actually was, and, and this is pretty much what, what they did already during the French Revolution, which was also organized by the mafia, this cartel. That's why it has the all-seeing eye above the French Declaration of Independence, right? You will see the all-seeing eye, the very same all-seeing eye. That's the cartel symbol. But um, the entire asset stripping and killing off of French royalty, they repeated for modern times with the Tsar. And that's why I'm saying right now it's very topical for also the royal families in Europe because they are to go the way of the Romanovs because they have a lot of land, especially the British monarchy, and they are very schmoozy with the cartel. But I'm telling them they are 
they are to go down because this cartel is a big churning machine. So these mafiosis are coming in and they need new lands. They need new, new profits. These are psychopaths. They don't care about old family lineages at the end of the day. They just want to get rich and powerful within their own lifetime. And whoever's there before and is old and frail is about to go. So, um, but the Romanovs is a very, very good example because this is exactly, again, this hidden history of Russia. And I'm so glad you brought it up because had these morons actually understood the plan and had they understood that the Russian Tsar family knew very well how to make a country prosperous and were about to do that, they wouldn't have plunged the whole of Russia into this abysmal poverty. And also the mass genocides that the cartel pulled through because both Russia and China had a massive genocide that surpassed anything that happened in, uh, in Germany and, and Central Europe in the Second World War. People don't say that, but those are the massive genocides of the, of the, 20, of the 20th century. And um, I have my personal experience about how this cartel takedown operation actually works because they did it with my country. They did it with Transylvania. So which is used to be Hungary and the Austro-Hungarian Empire and then became part of um, Romania after the First World War. But what they did with us, um, which was, I mean, as many people know, Romania was communist. So the, the country was given to Romania to break up Hungary. So two thirds of the area of Hungary was carved off. And Transylvania, very prosperous, very highly educational, very agricultural, powerful area with a lot of oil was given to Romania. But then what the cartel did already being in Romania is that they shipped in absolutely uneducated people from Romania. And I'm not anti-Romanian because a lot of Romanians lived in Transylvania as well, but they brought in the absolute worst, most illiterate, most uneducated proles that they could find and put them into high office, especially into the police. So if you go to communist, uh, back to communist times, we used to have the jokes and uh, the jokes could, could land you in prison for 30 years. And one of the staple jokes is, for example, two police, police officers find a dead body in front of the gymnasium, which is a higher level school, you know, and then they say to each other, OK, let's drag the dead body over to the post office because we don't know how to spell gymnasium you know um so for the crime report but that these sort of jokes which could land you in 20 you know 20 years in prison if uh, if anybody overheard that um that encapsulates exactly this um what the cartel did they took illiterate people and made them head of police these people couldn't spell their own name right it was absolutely ludicrous but it was this is how it was done because what they wanted to do is take the scum of society and put them above to pull this entire thing down because when you weaken society that's when the asset stripping can happen and that's how they came in and by the way mi6 was involved big time and i got that to know from an mi6 agent at st john's college who told me himself that he was you know during the cold war going into romania for operations right asset stripping operations right so they carved up the country. They arranged how the oil is going to be pumped off and, you know, taken elsewhere. But the key thing is, how did they do that? They did it with the weaponized morons. And this expression in communism of the dictatorship of the proletariat, the proletariat does not mean poor people. That's a big misunderstanding. They thought, oh, yes, all the poor people will get rich and they will have the, you know, communal lands of all the aristocrats. It's like, no, 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 no. Below the poor people is the proletariat, and that's the pathologically uneducated and dumb as F part of society that's incorrigible. That's the proletariat. So when you have the dictatorship of the proletariat, you have the dictatorship of absolutely thick as a brick, moronic scum. And those are the gang stalkers for you. Those are the senior handlers of this operation, these neighborhood operations. It's one-to-one -one communism, and it's exactly the same program. But from this past experience, because I've already seen how this movie pans out, I know what happens when the cartel and MI6 are finished with you, and they leave a country. They're like locusts. MI6 and these intelligence agencies are locusts because they take something that was prosperous, productive, and could have generated a lot of um, wealth, and knowledge and insight, and they wreck it. And then they move on to the next country. And they destroy everything, every ecosystem that was beautiful and valuable. But what they do is they promote organized crime. 
for this, they push up organized crime, organized crime networks when they're finished with the asset stripping operation, just like in Russia, post-communist Russia, Romania was the same. You have then the dictatorship of the organized crime warlords, right? These oligarchs, they are previously heads of organized crime. That's why they survived, right? And those are the, that's when the reign becomes utterly ruthless, you know? So, and that's, I predict that this is exactly the plan for the US. And this is why I'm really worried because I'm already seeing the dictatorship of the proletariat. When I'm talking to Chief Potts, the head of police in Colombia, and Colombia is in a small place, and he sounds thick as a brick, I think, oh my God, that's the dictatorship of the proletariat in, pre in question. So Karen, when you talk to the police chief in Tallahassee and you have this, you know, the, the face, you know, I know, I know that face. <laughs> I've seen the face. Um, that's terrible. It, it, what it means is they already pulled down the country. They sacked all the clever police officers. That's what it means. And the, the pension funds are now given to utter idiotic morons and criminals. And then this guy says to uh, Millicent, yes, well, well, if you die, we move on to your daughter. I mean, this guy should be shot in the head for high treason then and there. But um, the, the big cycle, you know, I mean, these are the individual dramas that you all live and these tragedies. But the big cycle is a big wash cycle of taking the proletariat, putting them above, pushing the country down, acid stripping it. And then when you're finished, look at Romania. Every time we go back there, the country is devastated. They have a real problem in the hospitals because all the doctors have left. No one wants to stay there. The income is awful. The working conditions are terrible. And your local council and the police are the, the most illiterate thugs you can imagine. You know, they're not even proper organized crime because organized crime is kind of self-employed. These people need to be in government employment and do organized crime day because they're too stupid to run an organized crime business. So, you know, it's like the worst of the worst. And I am terrified because I've seen this. So when one of the big worries I have right now, and I want all the Americans to keep that in the back of their mind and, and today take measures not to let that to come to pass, when I see the newest executive orders from Trump and I see how he's remodeling the entire, um, what's it called, the kind of military tribunals, and he's opening the conditions and letting in civilians, that's all nice and well if this was an ideal world. But in a world where you already have the reign of the proletariat, who are going to be those civilian judges doing military tribunals? They're going to be proles. They're going to be absolute scum. So if you don't suddenly take all your highly intelligent people, which unfortunately are now almost exclusively all targeted, and you, and you don't make them judges, you will have in these um, courts organized crime and idiots. And that's going to be deadly because then you will have the, the war tribunal machinery unleashed on a civilian population. And it will be just lynching, you know? And I'm so scared because that's exactly what happened in Romania. You know, it's it's the same wash cycle. And, and you have to keep in mind that all the really clever people have all been ejected out of the system, are all targeted. They're all at the bottom. They're on their last legs. So, you know, before you even think about that, you have to somehow lift them up. You know, we have to um, remodel this and we have to claw back the power and we need to kick out these criminals from high office before we even do anything. And, and we need to kick out the corrupt judges before we even get into court. That's the real challenge. Um, so Absolutely. But you know, Catherine, I was just thinking we've already scraped the bottom of the barrel here. You know, the, the criminals are already in power. You know, they are in the FBI and the CIA. Let's name these organizations organization agent Dallin wrote a whole we know the CIA is just an organized criminal mafia organization and apparently the FBI is too and apparently the FBI and CIA are working very closely they are criminal thugs in power that's who they are and so frankly if President Trump comes along and makes these executive orders and is planning some military tribunals I say yeah go for it and go straight to those agencies please and wipe them off the face of the earth because look at what they're doing and they're doing it to you and I Catherine they're doing it to Karen and me and you and, and Millicent and Sherry and everybody else that you know we are interviewing and speaking with so we are 
the intelligentsia who are being taken out. We're not, all of the intelligentsia is not being taken out because half of them is out there being mind controlled by the nonsense that's published by mainstream media. So you see, this this is the way the CIA has conducted affairs as well. They keep a few good front men, right? To present a good profile to the world. Oh, we're the CIA. We actually deal in intelligence and we are intelligent and we do good things. We save the country, national security, etc. And the same with the NSA and the FBI. We're so great. I mean, go to the FBI website. I was there this morning. So I'm looking at the Boston FBI website. Oh my. You know, pictures of community projects, going to schools, helping the community, doing this, that, and the other. Wonderful website. I guess public relations is a big, big focus of the FBI. I'd love to know the budget the FBI has for public relations because they've got a great website, okay? That's the website. And then the real truth is what you get from Gerald Sosby telling you that the, that the FBI is actually running torture and murder and assassination campaigns against people. Not just ex-FBI as he is, but against me. Just an average citizen running her own business and writing children's stories about manatees and, um, you know, about women's troubles in India when I was targeted. I was working on a novel. I was working on children, working on poetry. And all of a sudden, I'm under surveillance and I'm being followed by drones and helicopters. And I'm being hit with electromagnetic weapons on my body? What on earth, you know? So the FBI, and as we all know from listening to the stories of thousands of targets, those who are targeted are being tortured. This is not even normal surveillance. They're not just being watched and listened to. Their emails are not just being read. They are being tortured with electromagnetic weapons and with sonic weapons. We are being tortured. This is unacceptable. This is not sane. This is not civilized. This is not e even. So, if what you know are most definitely going. And on that uh, note, I want to tell every. Yesterday, at the science fair at my daughter's school, a middle school. She's in seventh grade. With, uh, let me name the school. It's Central Middle School in Quincy, Massachusetts. It's part of the Quincy Public School System. The Quincy uh, Public Schools is going to hear from me on this, and the principal of the school is going to hear from me on this, and the Boston FBI are going to hear from me on this. I walked into the gym where the science fair was held and into the opposite homeroom. Okay, there were two rooms. We were walking around looking at the children's projects almost immediately. I was hit. I was assaulted. I was assaulted sexually. I was literally raped in public. I was hit in my, my vagina and in my vulva. I was hit in my private parts. And the reason I'm being so candid about it and so open about it is because I think it is very important. I am a woman in America. I am a journalist in America. And I was hit in public on the ground in the continental United States of America, in Massachusetts, in my daughter's school, on the premises of my daughter's school. And as to how I was hit and who I was hit by, think about it. The place was swarming with parents. It was swarming with um, children, siblings. You know, think of it, it's a middle school. So you're thinking seventh, eighth graders, lots of little kids, time. And here, then I saw people who signal FBI. I did see the black uh, uniform and I feel that they were on their arm. So, you know, I didn't spend too much time looking at these people, but I did see the species out there. And no doubt there are, you know, local FBI or local police who have their kids in the school. But it seemed to me that a couple of these burly looking men were simply standing there at the head of the school and looking around. What were they doing? How were they there? I'd like to ask the principal, did the FBI come over and tell you that they needed that they needed to maintain a presence at the school fair last night, at the science fair last night, because there's somebody that they have under investigation and that these are court authorized activities that are under investigation? Was this what Gerald Sosby was talking about? You know, and I have to say, by the way, after that interview, I've been very badly hit. I've been massively COINTEL pro'd. Car is simply zooming at me in the stream. I mean, my daughter is sitting next to me as I'm driving her to school. She can see 
was going on. She's my witness, you know, as to what's going on. Massive has a little uh, stimuli and triggers placed around me, hope, no doubt, to get me to start re reporting this, relaying this, speaking out about it, and in desperate hopes of trying to discredit me as delusional and insane. Because as we all know, there is a protocol. And the protocol is to run massive psychological warfare against a target and to have the target self-incriminate and then be diagnosed by any watching or observing psychiatrist or, um, you know, someone who's reported to um, as insane. So this person is, you know, dismissed and discredited. So um, obviously as a journalist, you know, I'm in the public eye and I don't care because I've, it's been years now, it's been four years. I've been writing for four years. And um, I think at this point, people know that uh, my name is out there. My name is associated with the reports of surveillance abuse. And I am on that path and I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to continue reporting the surveillance abuse and this incredible criminality and corruption by the FBI, the CIA, the DHS, the NSA, the DIA, Army Intelligence, the Marine Corps, and every secret society on the face of the earth it's, until it stopped. I'm not going to stop reporting until it stopped. Now, one of the things Gerald said to me was, you know, he was afraid that people whom he had spoken to had gotten killed. And he really worried and feared for me after this interview. And um, they're still hitting me intensely in the heart. This is what they like to do. And this is why I sit with a shield right next to me, you know. So I know that they are trying to kill me. And um, this kind of stuff that we're talking about and what we're saying here needs to be public. We need to have this as a public conversation. I'm a journalist who is reporting on this. I'm trying to get the real truth of surveillance abuse, of the surveillance state abuse out to the world. And I am being targeted and I'm being attacked. So if anything happens to me, I'm putting this on record. I'm putting this on record that everything I'm reporting is the absolute truth as it is given to me and as I'm experiencing it. And if I'm targeted further because of that, then you all know why and you all know who is doing it as well. So to come back to the gymnasium, I was hit extremely and um, to the extent that I had to go home, I had to leave. I had to leave the, um, the science fair. I, I could not stay for the award ceremony. And, you know, my daughter had a chart. Apparently, everybody whom they wanted to give an award to had a star on their chart. She had a star on her chart. She did the project as a group project, by the way. So all three of them, they had this star on their chart. Um, but I could not stay for the award ceremony because I was so intensely assaulted, sexually assaulted and abused in public. An American woman journalist assaulted in public with radio and sonic weapons, swarmed by people around, people holding cell phones and also those little fat cell phone like things, which may be, you know, the um, actual portable dues. They may not be cell phones, as you know, we've seen on Neil Sheffrier's uh, site. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, Citizens Against um, Harmful Technologies, I think, um, where he has a photograph of supplement left in someone's driveway and what it is is it's it looks like a cell phone but on the inside it's it's a modern microwave weapon very very miniaturized it's a tiny weapon. so i did see those kinds of little fat cell phones that people were using seemingly cell phones that people were holding out to me and you know literally track there were all these people standing around and um, in that kind of situation, literally anybody could carry a portable to you in a backpack or in a purse. They just need to set it down somewhere and they need to endpoint that implement at your private parts. And I think that's what happened. And this happened to me in a public area in a why I'm so enraged and outraged. And frankly, I'm not going to take it anymore. And I'm not going to be silent. I'm not going to be silent. I'm going to let the FBI know that I take a pretty dim view of being raped in public, you know, and I do blame this. I do lay this at their door. I do blame this on them because who else would march into a school and say, we can use our weapons. We can use, we can go because we have a court order and we are, we've got this person under investigation, etc. On previous visits to the school, I should also say, when I was at one of the first open houses at the school, I noticed there was, uh, okay, 
this man looked like um, he actually had a family with, uh, you know, wearing a, a burqa and everything. So obviously a Muslim family. But this gentleman and his son looked at me, pointed self for me, nudged each other when I took a photograph. Guess what I took a photograph of? Um, the, 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 okay, the open house was mainly about the teachers giving little presentations on what they were going to do in the classroom, you know, with the curriculum that year. And the English teacher was doing a, a little slideshow and she showed a picture of the cover um, of Animal Farm. And I thought it was very interesting that in this classroom, by the way, I took other pictures of the classroom, which had pictures of, you know, the Moloch, the owl all around the classroom. Quincy Public Schools, completely owned by the Masons or the cartel. Anybody who worships the owl, the owl was all over there. There were two posters with a crown on it. So Crown Corporation, Moloch, the owl, I think you can all put that together. And you know, those posters were, what is it? Stay calm and carry on. And now it's time to freak out with the crown image on there, the logo on there. So those were the pictures I was taking. And then I took a picture of this anim animal farm cover, which had the rising sun, the Illuminati rising sun on the cover. So look how they are taking over Orwell, okay? They're basically in your face saying, symbolism right the school the middle school okay in quincy public school so i took a picture of that and this man is nudging his son nudge leans over and nudges his wife and they both look at me and like so what was the story going around the dramology and taking photographs and this is a highly suspect activity yes i do take photographs i take photographs of everything i report on everything i write about everything i am a journalist Anybody know what that means? So this man is nudging that person. And I'm thinking, so there's a story here. There's an un underlying story. He's been fed a little story, and that's playing out currently. So this is what they are doing in my daughter's school right now. I am being, as Gerald Sosby has explained he is being, I'm being defamed in public. I'm being slandered and libeled in public. You know, stories are being told about me clearly. And people are being invited to watch what I'm doing doing monitor me and point cell phones at me. So this is absolutely unacceptable. I have had it. I have absolutely had it. For four years, I didn't know what was going on. I spent my quest going on and listening to people, by the way, on our, our look to the police. You'll be seen as mad. You'll be thrown. Can't say a word. So I thought, okay, fine, I won't go to the local police, but I'm going to investigate this at a higher level. I'm going to do some FOIA requests. Well, okay, now it's four years. I've done my FOIA requests. I've figured out a whole bunch of stuff. I've been talking to whistleblowers. We all know what's going on. We have criminals in power at the FBI and at the CIA and at the DHS who are defaming and slandering us in public, calling us terrorists, saying we need to be watched. Oh, by the way, calling us pedophiles, calling us, um, God knows what else, druggies, I don't know, uh, prostitutes. Oh, yes, I forgot about that little choice epithet that was directed my way as well by a neighbor, calling us prostitutes, etc., and thereby justifying their corralling of neighbors into watching us, surveilling us, monitoring us, um, and, you know, putting us down. So this kind of massive defamation, to me, this enrages me so much, I can't even begin to tell you. The FBI is defaming and slandering me. The FBI is defaming and slandering Karen. The FBI is defaming and slandering Catherine. And everybody in their own countries, in their own homes, in their own neighborhoods. This is unacceptable. I am going to put an end to it. So I have determined I'm going to start a series of articles focusing on the FBI. If anybody has specific information about the FBI, please send me a story. I'm going to do a massive series on the subject. And I'm also going to interview any whistleblower come forward and tell me about the FBI. I want to put your stories out there. I want to put the reports out there. I want us to work together as a country and literally as a globe, you know, as a series of countries around the world to begin to end the reign of these ghastly criminal agencies who are destroying our lives when they should be in jail.
I, I think it's this is spot on. One of the things I can say about the FBI is that uh, the FBI has for a very long time, I mean, that was the first target for infiltration by the mob. And I think by now the FBI is the mob. It's the American arm of the Italian mafia. But I think the other thing that I can tell from systems analysis, and I think there's plenty, I mean, there's the Ted Gunderson affidavit, but much more, many more links, is I think the FBI is running the pedophile rings in the US. They are in charge of distributing the children because it's the FBI that has all these field officers, that has all these branches, all the tentacles on the local level. And I think um, this is exactly this kind of like domestic intel and foreign intel. The difference is that foreign intel imports children and drugs and sells arms and domestic distributes. I think this is how it works. In, in the UK, for example, I expect that MI5 distributes the children and the drugs on the local level and MI6 imports all this. Also other stuff, uranium, you know, radioactive um, stuff, nuclear weapons, yada, yada, yada. But it, this is it. It's like, you know, the procurement. This is the supply chain of the cartel. It has entirely subverted and deep captured these organizations. But the FBI will be in charge of the local distribution of children and the local supply. And I think there's a guy called Tory, I think it was a guy called Tory Smith who died. He was murdered. And he was murdered by, I think, a virus or something that makes people, um, it, it emaciates people. So you can see him within just weeks you know, withering away and dying. But he was talking a lot about FBI, uh, heads of FBI being involved in uh, uh, pedophilia. And you can still find Tory Smith's um, YouTube channel. But I think he also had, I mean, he has the jawline of somebody who had, you know, the, the kind of uh, uh, steroids that they give people in military training. And uh, he talks code. So when you listen to his uh, videos, you know, a lot of the stuff that sounds as rhetoric, to me, it sounds like actually Intel code, but they're talking about taking out, um, you know, people who are involved, FBI agents who are involved in uh, child abuse, but politicians, high level FBI agents. Uh, so you can still find Tory Smith's YouTube channel. You should, uh, you know, go, um, all, the, all the listeners should go and, and root around there, especially when you're in the U.S. Um, the other thing is also that the FBI will have all the local links to these corrupt companies. I mean, goodness, Ramola, when you told me about this guy who's involved with the, um, the transfusion, the blood transfusion business, I mean, look no further for vampires, right? <laughs> vampires in, the, in that sense, right? Um, and uh, yes, what huge criminal business. Also, uh, we should keep it in mind that blood transfusions are perfect if you're preparing for mass genocide of your population in a war, a civil war-like situation. You just need to, um, you know, poison or infect the uh, the blood supply, and then kick off maybe some, you know, some little, uh, you know, disaster where people would get um, blood transfusions. Um, so all that stuff is is, is highly, highly important. But um, one of the things before we, um, I see Melanie's coming on, before we pass the microphone. Hi, Melanie. I just wanted to share my screen and actually point towards two things I would like to highlight because one of them is um, this there. This is Ramola's channel, and I want to point people to report number 56. That's the one Ramola was talking about with Gerald Sosby. Very important. And for court cases, I'm in the process of finally brushing up my website. So if you go to my website, Stop007, and the FAQ, I made a section where I collected all the major, if you scroll down, you can find all the major affidavits I could get together. So you'll find the affidavit. I've reposted it. Hopefully people don't rip my head off. But I reposted uh, William Benny's, Ted Gunderson's, Gerald Sosby's affidavit, and Gerald Sosby has several. So I found a 2005 and a 2014 affidavit. He's also got lots of information on his website. You also have the interview. This is not an affidavit. This is an interview, but good enough for court. Um, the interview by Carl Clark in the original German and English. And then the affidavit of Andrea Davison. Actually, she used to work for MI6. Um, and uh, that's about British police cr criminality, which mirrors, you know, the um, FBI criminality pretty much. So I just wanted to point people to it. Oh, by the way, one last thing I wanted to say. 
because I really like the fact, Ramula, that you're saying, right, that's it, we're going after them. You know, going after the school, writing letters to the school, I think we should also contact your local FBI, just like for Millicent. You know, I should rep report the call and then we should upload, finally, I have to upload the, the calls I made to the FBI for Millicent. Um, but the other thing is also, I am now ready this weekend. I'm finally, I finished the letter to the neighbors and I just wanted to flash it up. It's now in German and I'm translating it after the show into English. And one of the things I put into the letter to the neighbors, I just would like to flash it up. I mean, I, I'm going to post it, the open office, as well as the PDF, so people can take it and modify it for their purposes. I'm informing them about all the criminality. I'm telling them that, you know, microwaves can go through several walls. Um, but also, I wanted to show you some diagrams. I made this diagram trying to explain to the neighbors that if I'm the victim and one of the perpetrators shoots at me, 50% of the radiation hits me, but 50% goes through and hits another neighbor. Okay, so it's almost 50-50. I mean, depending on the wall structure, it's sometimes 45 and 55 and so on. But this is the general rule. So if I have been machine gunned for two years, the scatter, the reflected wave is going to hit other neighbors. And with pulsed um, shots, it's exactly the same. Some shots scatter and hit random neighbors. So they should really know about that. And then one of the things I'm drawing their attention to is, first of all, here, um, why... You know, why would a government shoot me 50% and the neighbor 50%? And that's because they want us all to die. You know, part of the wave reflects back to the perpetrator if they hit at the wall straight. But they want to clear the entire area where we live. And I'm trying to explain it to them now that I actually found the genocide forecasts. I'm saying, you know, the forecast genocide or the planned genocide in Switzerland is 33%. So every sw third Swiss is to be murdered and not by 2080, but by 2025. So every third Swiss is to be killed off within the next seven years, okay? So maybe your neighbors might be interested. And the reason why they are dying is because some corrupt bastard just living one down from them wants to earn a lot of money and is too bloody proletarian to understand that they're gonna get this much money, but then they're gonna die, you know? And one last um, branch of, um, you know, line of thought that's missing here. I was talking to the whistleblower, Harry Heutschi in Switzerland, who was reporting about the theft of the social insurance monies. And he said, well, he's in finance, you know, and he said he calculated how much every Swiss could actually get if the social insurances had, because they, they stole billions and billions from a country um, where the population is smaller than greater London. So they stole billions from the Swiss. And if they hadn't stolen these monies, he said the Swiss wouldn't have to work any longer. The social insurance was so profitable that he said every Swiss could now be literally living off 10,000 francs per month doing nothing their entire life. Right. Because, I mean, it's clear why the banks are here. The rate of return is here. And that shows you the fact that the Swiss still have to work their you know, butts off shows you how much money was stolen. And now this is just the beginning of the asset stripping. Now comes the genocide. And I tell you, the genocide will be just like the moving away from uh, of people in Romania. And when the population decreases, the, the country collapses because there's no way to make a profit when your population is decreasing. The same thing happened in East Germany. Poverty sets in. You can only have a booming business if people are moving in. You know, more people are coming in. You've got a booming economy. You can sell to more and more people. That's how you can make a lot of money. When they're killing Sorry. off the population, that's it, you know? Sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, that was a phone call. Right. I'm not going to be uh, very long here. Uh, today so um, but uh, I just wanted to uh, remind people that we're still looking for funds for the next scanning event we have received some funds and I would like to thank uh, the donors but it is not enough yet so um, because well there are also of course uh, you know uh, costs linked to the running of ICATO so um, our goal is still what 1500 euros <laughs> Uh, that way we can also cover Catherine's travel expenses um, if she next comes uh, to the next scanning. So uh, I, I think that we're in the um, 
in the description we always put uh, the GoFundMe page if one, people want to support us uh, because I, I would really like to organize one uh, now like uh, next maybe a, a May or, a, uh, or June not later than that so I just want to thank the donors that have <laughs> spent some money and would like to invite uh, everybody to to help us so that we can go on with the CVC Ikator scanning project very soon. Because Melanie, thanks so much for coming on. It's so good to see you and thanks for giving us that little update. I know that, you know, we are all very concerned that Ikator continue to function and at the highest level and, um, but it's not going to be able to function at the highest level, I guess, until some funding comes in. So, yeah. So I would like to take this opportunity to ask people to, to support us. Because actually, the last, the group scanning was actually uh, almost a year ago now, uh, in last May. So um, we really need to go on with the project to get the, the scientific evidence we need. And, and you know what, I would like to say one thing, I've got two announcements. Um, one of them is that I received some donations which I wanted to um, divert towards the scanning event to um, make it um, happen. But what happened is that they locked my PayPal account. So my PayPal account is now locked with large, a large sum of money that could have gotten us there. And they locked it recently. And that is because, so they first um, contacted me that they are reviewing accounts and I wrote back to them and I explained what I was doing. They did not reply. And suddenly they just locked my account. And that's because they said they detected me to be a security threat. And they think that I might be involved in money laundering. And I said, well, hang on a second, because I've already cleared the fact that I'm connect collecting donations with the local Swiss. I've con contacted the local Swiss tax authority and the Canton tax authority. And the, the Canton basically said, go away. The, the sums you're talking about are so piffling. We don't even have the manpower. They're like, just go away. We don't care about your power part. But I cleared it to them with them. And I said, well, it's going to be part of my tax declaration. And now PayPal says that they have to police my own personal tax affairs and not just that they didn't just give it back to the donors they locked the account and now the money is under lock for 180 days so okay. this is this is theft and this is one thing i wanted to announce the second thing and this is relevant to you melanie um millicent received a very large donation or somebody wanted to give a very very large donation to millicent and gofundme blocked the donation three times so I think this person now has to write a check. So I think GoFundMe is suspect and PayPal are suspect. And by the way, both PayPal and GoFundMe take off at least 5%. So that's correct, that I can confirm. And we recently had an issue as well with GoFundMe. In fact, apparently somebody uh, had said that they had authorized a donation of 25 euros, you know, the huge fortune, and then apparently complained to GoFundMe that they had never authorized this uh, donation and that they wanted it back. So our GoFundMe page was locked down also for, for quite a while, but it's now working again. And we had to prove everybody that we're real people. Uh, you know, That's we're really people. That's really <laughs> clever way to lock down a GoFundMe page, isn't it? Anybody yeah. could do it then. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, so it's now open again, but we had this issue. So I guess GoFundMe is not reliable. No, yeah. and, and this is why I'm bringing it up because I want to share my screen and I want to point everybody to the Ikator page. So please go to Ikator, so I C A T O R dot B E, Ikator. If you go to join us, I think that's where it is, you will find the yes. bank details. So please do a direct bank transfer because then we save the 5% GoFundMe fee and the PayPal 5% fee. And then we just have the, uh, the bank transfer. If you're donating from within Europe, the Eurozone, there are no bank fees. Otherwise, there might be some bank fees. And one of the things I'm looking into actually, which might be, um, uh, might be really worth our time, is that um, there's something called TransferWise. And with TransferWise, um, actually, it's one of the companies that Richard Branson set up, but I did use it a couple of times. And then they cut the, um, the money transfer fees massively. You pay just a fraction. So if your bank is messing you around, maybe use TransferWise and then try to donate money with that. Maybe you should set up a TransferWise account because that's like PayPal, but it doesn't have these fees. And you can then um, pull it straight into your bank account within the Eurozone. Right. But actual money exchange fees are a lot cheaper and you get a much better rate. 
you know so transfer wise might be another option but i'm warning people gofundme seems to be a cartel um uh company and paypal for sure is a um, uh, cartel company in fact for paypal i have got a big warning because um in switzerland they used to have a big um a referendum and what they wanted to do is they wanted to have gold-backed money status shoot big big deal for the cartel when you have fiat currencies and what happened is the political campaign had a paypal donation and the paypal account got locked for a swiss political referendum and that was the biggest scandal ever so they they, they are they are nasty they are criminals basically you know um so i just wanted to warn people and please if you can do a direct bank transfer for now and then we should look into transfer wise that would be good and then you know the other the other announcement is i did get donations but i can't get at them so i will also need campaigning help to unlock my paypal account you know i'm i'm I literally i'm going to i'm about when i'm finished with the neighborhood campaign i'm going to write to them and i'm going to say listen paypal i'm going to take you to court if you don't give me my money right now yeah. because they yeah. don't have the right to be policing and locking money away they just they're not a police organization yeah, so absolutely. but that, that's what they're doing and yeah as i said you know we had the same problem with gofundme for 25 euros and we are all all ikato board members had to prove their identity and prove that we're real people and that we're not involved in money laundering or any kind of criminal activity and then finally they they opened it up again so it is it should now be working the gofundme page on the on ikato website should be working. but that's what can happen to you for 25 euros that somebody apparently you know wanted back because <laughs> I, I think you get an authorization. The... I, I even think that's a cover story because no one does that. You know, yeah. I think what happens is that they got a cartel guy, some little intel guy, to donate twenty five euros and demand it back to disrupt, and then they could trigger the the um um lock. That's that's what I would assume. Yeah. yeah and you. what a joke and an absolute irony, Han, that you know they accuse you and us of money laundering and trafficking when that's exactly what they are involved in. You know, that's what the intelligence agencies are involved in. They're not doing intelligence. They're doing money laundering and human trafficking and drug trafficking and child trafficking and exactly. pedophilia and pornography and God knows what else, you know. What's Sorry, really, really intelligence is the wrong word for you. You know what's really funny, Ramola, to accuse me, me in Zurich of money laundering when it's a couple of hundred of Swiss francs. I'm like, you guys have no idea about money laundering in Zurich, you know? <laughs> if you're after a few hundred francs, you're on the wrong train, you know? Yeah. But that's yeah, this is a uh, harassment strategy, I think, that to accuse somebody like ordinary citizens of us that basically stand up to tyranny uh, of of a crime that they actually committing with a typical exactly. harassment uh, technique. Uh, yeah, yeah, my yeah, my assessment looking around at the number of swimming pools is I'm the only one in Switzerland or in Zurich who doesn't do money laundering. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Anyway. Probably. Yes, that's it. You know, see, that's exactly right. We are standing out in our neighborhoods because we simply refuse to money launder. We simply refuse to traffic. We simply refuse to turn a blind eye when the FBI comes by engaging in corruption, you know. So that, that's why we stand out. I would also like to thank publicly uh, all the, the people that have uh, inquired uh, about my situation, my personal situation, the situation with my daughter. And I would like to thank people for all of their interest. Um, I cannot comment on this because it's an ongoing procedure, but it is certainly heartwarming to see how many people um, care about us and uh, and I uh, still get a lot of uh, requests uh, asking me what is going on and uh, if um, I have uh, recovered my baby and, uh, and so on. So I would like to, to thank publicly people for all of their heartwarming <laughs> uh, messages and and and, and uh, the big interest uh, our story has received and i can also just add to that and say that you know i've spoken a little bit with melanie and um while she is not going to be you know coming forward and talking too much openly about it i'll talk a little bit about it and i'll do some writing and reporting next week um, on the on the status in the case we do still need world support of this situation uh, with Melanie's baby and I will publish shortly on it but please go back and read my previous articles the situation has not changed that else well and 
and from Melanie's life. So it's very, very maintained public interest and public uh, Please stay tuned and please stay engaged. Uh, we all need, uh, uh, you know, in the situation. Right. I don't know what is happening at uh, if it's what is going on, on at your end or mine. It's it's kind of like a, you know a, it's very the, to, the 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 audio is coming back and forth. So yeah. So what's happening for is that Ramola? Ramola seems to have this uh, Randy Webster hack that she had ever since uh, she published the article about Millicent. So the color is changing. And then, you know, the, but the audio today, I noticed the audio is being delayed very carefully when uh, Ramola starts yeah. talking about the FBI, there's a, you know, three second delay until they figure out what Ramola says. And then they just try to garble it or let us hear it, you know, with three second delay. So it's today it's about, we're talking about the FBI and they are clearly very, very concerned. So they should be. I'm concerned. I will uh, let me make let me make an announcement to the FBI. A separate private video that I will make public shortly with an address to the FBI, based on everything that I have learned about the FBI. I am absolutely outraged about what they are doing. I am going to stand for it. I think the time for silence is over, and the time to speak out. It is time to speak out for every one of us. And by the way, the reason I'm speaking out today and the reason I spoke out so openly about what happened to me last night at my daughter's school is because my daughter is 13 years old. I was in a school full of 13 year olds. What if these weapons are trained on them? They can be, they, they may be tr being trained on them right now. What if my daughter is raped in public in broad daylight using these radio and sonic weapons? which are being hidden as anti-personnel technologies and surveillance technologies and biometric technologies by the FBI and local law enforcement? How dare they have access to weapons like that? How dare they assault me in public? How dare they have the ability to assault my daughter in public? You know, this is why I'm speaking out. This is why I'm standing up. And I'm not going to stop until these weapons are taken off the streets and until we achieve an absolute ban of these weapons. They should not be used. They absolutely should not be used because they can be used and abused so easily. They're remote weapons. They're radiation weapons. They are stealth weapons. Nobody in human society should have them. Okay, so I have to go, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, thank you for um, yeah, thank our audience for all of this interest uh, that we're still receiving and. Uh, for it's been great to, to be here and, and to share a moment with you. And, uh, it's good to see you. Hear more from us. I don't know, uh, Catherine, if tomorrow you have the time to do a, a techno criminal mittler in German. I don't Absolutely. Know, uh, Absolutely. Yes. And we should fix the time. Something like, um, I don't know, 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. Something uh, like that. Yeah, 8, 8 p.m. Would, would be fine. 8, 8 p.m. Okay. So tomorrow in German. <laughs> okay. We'll speak about that later. Have a, have a great afternoon, everybody, and uh, see you soon. See you tomorrow, Melanie. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye. Melanie. Bye. <laughs>
but also police officers, also people in the um, care, social services. And we are now literally, the, the, the machine is starting. And at the very beginning of last year, I said that um, this entire this is entire thing that we're doing is a system cycle. They wanted to put the proletariat above and we have to come right from below and actually push the pro proletariat out and push them into jail once and for all these criminal scumbags. Um, but in this system cycle, the way it works is it is literally like a helicopter taking off. So every cycle, we're always doing the same thing. We're going around in circles. So people shouldn't despair because we're going around in circles. We're talking about the same topics. We're tackling the same criminality. We send the same letters, but that's not the point. The point is how much height do we gain with every revolution and how quickly are we going around? You know, how quickly is this turnover? of sending a letter, identifying corrupt police officers and, and throwing them out. Because my prediction is that as we're gathering speed, like a helicopter, like the chopper blades, we're going around faster and faster and faster, and that's what's gonna give us uplift. So we have to learn what to do to get these corrupt police officers and corrupt judges out, but it is already happening that the blades are already turning in the UK and the US, and now they are thankfully starting to turn here in uh, Switzerland as well. And I'm so pleased about that. And in 2018, that's when we're going to, to really feel you know, this kind of centrifugal force when things start uh, start going and more and more people join us in taking down these, um, these cr corrupt criminals. And another thing that's really going to help us, I think, is that every corrupt hub or little network has assaulted a very large number of people. So some people were asset stripped financially, some people were abused as children, other people were sexually abused later, or they were mobbed at work and so on and so on. Other people had chips implanted in them. So when the system turns around and you know we're all turning in on these people, they will be ripped to shreds from many sides at the same time. And that's this kind of like, you know, pack hounding effect that we uh, we will see, I think. And I'm looking forward to that, I have to say, because I want these people, the top leaders, I want the criminals arrested and I personally want them dead, you know. I mean, I'm from, from Romania, I can tell you a little anecdote because uh, some people don't um, don't remember, but uh, Romania, communist Romania had a dictator called uh, Nicolae Ceausescu. And Ceausescu was a total proletarian. He could barely read and write, nor could his wife. And they were both given, I think his wife was given an, uh, an actual PhD. I mean, un honorary doctorates, you can't count. And a, and a PhD in biochemistry, which was ironic for a woman who had, I think, four years of primary school or something like that. So somebody wrote this piece of paper, you know, the actual PhD, and then she received a prize. But eventually, when this entire system was toppled i mean at the time we thought it got toppled and now i know oh no 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 mi6 just went on to the next phase of the asset stripping cycle but what happened is that Ceausescu was toppled and his wife was toppled there was a staged a staged coup that was entirely staged by secretary the cia and mi6 and whoever else was involved um but then they took the dictator who has been a hate figure and actually an oppressive figure for absolutely decades in the country and they rounded them up. They had a quick, you know, summary judgment and they shot him and his wife. And I remember I was a child um, and I was in Germany and I saw it on the on the eight o'clock news in Germany, you know. And I saw this entire coup, how he was bundled into a helicopter and taken somewhere. And the next thing was the execution. And um, I'm not a bloodthirsty person, but after all the suffering the country went through, I have to say, I was, I was very, very young at the time when I saw this, but seeing this guy shot was the most therapeutic thing that could have happened. It was, it was, I was so happy. I was so young. I actually went into the kitchen, crawled onto the table and was crying from joy because this total psychopath and criminal was removed from our life. Um, I'm not advocating, you know, lynchings and stuff like that, but I do advocate, I do advocate the death penalty for war criminals where there's a proper, you know, proper investigation, not an MI6 staged, uh, you know, nonsense investigation. No, when all the evidence is public, the entire court case is public, and we are sure we've got these war criminals. Yes, we have to execute them because psychopaths only respond to their own death. That's the only thing that makes psychopaths stop. And that's why mafia bosses kill people. You know, if you could nicely talk to these mafiosis, they probably would, you know, 
they don't have to uh, groom other serial killers for the mafia, but they don't. They just shoot them in the head because they know that with psychopaths, there's, there's no discussing. And I really think that, that this is what we should aim for. And civil society has to turn serious. These people have to take us seriously again, you know, because we turned weak on these people. And I think that's an entire appeal. I'm still really pissed off, and that's something for another day. I'm going to pass the microphone back, but I just want to say I'm really angry that I notified the entirety of Oxford, all my colleagues at CERN in particle physics and at Oxford, these are intellectuals. They can find out what's going on within two hours. They've got the brains, and none of them, not one person got back to me and asked me how I was or how I'm doing or if I need any help. Now, that's not good enough because I'm telling these intelligentsia people that they are next. If they think that they can pull through this, holding their head down, that's not good enough. So I'm, I'm about to write back to them, show them all the video, videos and say, hey, guys, this is how your colleague is being machine gunned at night 24-7, you know, in Oxford, there are lawyers, there are human rights lawyers, there are people who teach law. Could some of them maybe help me with this court case pro bono, please, you know, to save the country? There are physicists, there are engineers, there's absolutely everybody we need. So why are they keeping quiet? And I think Oxford has another massive dark secret. I know what it is. I, I know that they are an outfit of the cartel. They're an outfit of the City of London Corporation. And Oxford and Cambridge are actually intelligence agencies. That's what I'm thinking. But still, the pseudo academics and actual intelligence agents have to pull their head out of their rear side and have to know, well, if you guys are intelligence agents and this entire, you know, academic university stuff is just a show to something that you put there as a front. OK, well, if I'm dealing with intelligence agents, get on the case. You know, how about now would be a great time, you know, to fight terrorism and do what intelligence work is actually about, used to be a long time ago, you know. So okay. I'm already announcing. Get, get, too busy. get too busy money laundering, Catherine. Sorry, no time for intelligence. Uh, no, no real, you know, possibilities or channels really for intelligence. You know, they do a bit of cartel signaling. They're, they're so busy touching their noses and eyes and ears and, you know, signaling to each other that we're all money launderers here together. You know, I'm one, you're one, everyone's one. Uh, you know, that they really have no time for uh, national security, as we know. As we know, national security is a big fat lie, right? We all know that. Uh, what's going on is the, you know, the war industry is manufacturing wars and um, manufacturing terrorism. National security is um, not really a, a concern of these agencies. What their real age, what their real concern is running false flag operations, creating terrorists, creating uh, mass shooters, and so on and so forth. And you know, it all goes back to that whole cycle that they've got going with the weapons that they've developed. Now, the very sophisticated neurotechnology weapons that they have developed, uh, and that they are using. And you know, it goes back to my pet peeve, the radio frequency and sonic weapons, which I'll come back to in just a minute. But um, the thing I wanted to say, actually, in response to what you have pointed out. Hey, Karen, I think there's a little bit of feedback coming from possibly from your microphone, is it? Can you guys hear me? I'm just wondering if it's my headset I now. Switched, I switched my microphone off. Okay, okay. All right, because I suddenly start hearing, but you know, they're messing with my headset. I'm going to have to figure out how to get rid of this headset and get a different one because they're I able to hack into this one. I can hear you perfectly now, and your your image has cleared up on my end in Europe. So I think you know, yeah. Interesting. I, I think I, I said the Randy Webster, you know, keyword, and now I think uh, NSA quickly cleared out Randy Webster and his yeah. team because I would be embarrassed. Very good point. Very good point. Randy Webster, by the way, you know, we are going to go after him in a big, big way. In words, in print, may I remind those uh, so-called monitors listening in our conversations, which they really shouldn't be. But of course, they have nothing else to do. They might as well. Um, so, you know, though you guys should know, and I keep telling everybody this in letters and emails. I put it on my, on my, uh, you know, on my monitor as well. We're going after them with words. Words are the most powerful weapons in the world. Words will bring down their careers. Um, I, I 
am committed to using language and to using words to expose the truth of this, to expose the criminality of this, and to, to bring down their careers. Why? Uh, I'm sorry, I really don't believe in a world run by money launderers, traffickers, and pedophiles. Um, I'm not impressed by it, and I'm going to be working to remove it, as we all are. So, you know, this is, we are, we are, we are just announcing our intentions to the world um, again. So, uh, Catherine, the, the point I wanted to make is, you know, you are absolutely right. When you are mutilated to such an extent, and when you reach out, and when you write to scientists that you know, when you write to academics that you know, nobody responds. When you write to the media and nobody responds. And I'm telling you, I think the reason that this is going on, you know, the reason that we are living in this world today, where this kind of incredible abuse is being carried out on you, me, everybody we know, Dr. Melissa Black, Karen, whistleblowers of every stripe, the reason this kind of extreme abuse and extreme torture and extreme barbarism continues to be carried out on our bodies and on our brains is because primarily of the press, the media that is refusing to publish, that is refusing to publish the truth, refusing to heed the reports that are being brought out by the dozens, you know, by the hundreds, by the thousands all around the world. They're refusing to publish the truth. Instead, they're operating as a propaganda arm, you know, of those so-called agencies, intelligence agencies. They're acting as a propaganda arm. They are putting out popcorn, PSYOP propaganda piece, cons. They are conning the public in a mass, mass way. They are publishing lines. So you have a bunch of criminals, you know, in the local FBI, in the CIA, in, the, in every single intelligence agency, in the local fusion center, in the police department, a bunch of criminals and thugs using microwave weaponry, using sonic weaponry on civilians, on outstanding civilians, you know, on smart people, on bright people, on people with integrity and conscience, and also all kinds of other weapons, you know, neural weapons, biological weapons, chemical weapons, and covert implantation. The clandestine services have clicked into place. The CIA is most definitely involved. Yeah, and they're also running these MK Ultra style experiments, which involve taking over of the brain, biohacking, brain hacking, biorobotizing, neural abuse. Um, I think all of you saw that article, that interview that um, Omni did with me recently, reporting neural abuse. Um, other people are reporting massive amounts of neural abuse, massive amounts of synthetic telepathy, V2K, etc. These are horrific military grade technologies. People have been reporting them for years and the so-called media has not reported accurately. You know, and I'm talking about the New York Times, I'm talking about the Washington Post, the Chicago Tribune, the LA Times, you know, and of course the other more um, e easily seen to have been taken over media outlets as well, such as ABC and CBS and CNN and so forth, you know, these are propaganda spots, hotspots. These guys are running propaganda. This is like, you know, Voice of America running prop propaganda during the Vietnam War. And it's also like, well, it's like, uh, you know, Russia and China, right? It's like any communist country that's using the media to run propaganda for that country's horrific policies. And that's, what's, that's the situation we're living in today. So actually, you know, we may be living in communist America. We just don't know it. This may be communist Nazi America already. The media is already taken over and publishing absolute lies and publishing popcorn. So it's because of that. And it's because of that, that the cries of Anne Frank, you know, we are the modern Anne Franks. The cries of today's Anne Franks are going unheard. You know, so what we are reporting is simply falling on deaf ears or is being understood by a very small minority of smart people out there who understand that this is all true. We are absolutely reporting the truth. And the rest of them, you know, the rest of the populace, like my sister, a doctor, part of the intelligentsia, you would think, part of the smart crowd, okay? She's completely taken in and she believes the popcorn. So totally brainwashed and mindwashed by the popcorn. 
So, you know, and I think that is the problem. So this is why I always bring it back to the media. The media is such a huge, big issue. They are as criminally to blame. They're as uh, implicated in this crime. The media is as implicated in this crime as the FBI and the CIA. I'm totally agreed. I mean, I don't remember the first name of uh, the big new Brzezinski's daughter who is on uh, is it CNN, but she was quoted as saying that their job was to tell the American people what they thought, meaning what the American people were supposed to think. You know, that's a long way from we're going to present you the facts you make up your mind as to what it means. You know, I mean, even even I mean, it's we started being manipulated even by Cronkite, who was supposed to be one of the most uh, honest and decent journalists of the time, but he had his leanings and started us uh, subtly down this way. But no, you present facts and then you let the thinking people uh, make up their minds. And if you want to help them along, then you give two opposing views as to their interpretation. That's not journalism. That's basically just, you know, uh, I forget the name for it, but it's a narrator. It's, a, it's somebody who gives you an opinion and you decide, does that, does that mesh with what I think or am I with the other guy, you know? But, you know, her admission that they were there to inculcate the uh, official story into the minds of Americans so that they know what they're supposed to think, you know, if they think uh, something different, are they going to get electromagnetic shock? you know, like a cattle prod from afar. I mean, that's what we're getting to. They're trying to read minds, collect data on um, mind frequencies that may or may not mean certain types of words or concepts. And if the, you have an anger concept through their mind, are they going to send a shock to you from, you know, the uh, local uh, mind monitor five miles away? I mean, people, this is not science fiction. This is science horror. You know, this is um, <laughs> this is the insanity is now your world, and cognitive dissonance is a very poor shield for it. You know, you've got to wake up, and I know that uh, it's inconvenient to think that things are not the way they've always been, but you know what? If you continue with cognitive uh, dissonance, you will die. You will uh, either physically die or you will uh, give up your life and you won't have an emotional or an intellectual freedom and you will be all but dead. So this is the time to wake up, listen and expand your thinking to encompass what is really going on. Step outside the box as to what you think has always gone on, because if you know, the United States and the world has not been what you think it is for a very long time because it's been basically this monster sneaking up on you, and it's about a hair away from pouncing right now. We are the vanguard of its first victims, you know, uh, the tail end of the first victims, because they've been doing this for decades. But uh, we are the ones who have the technology available to have podcasts and to speak out and to get together and to organize and find each other as where other people were just stuck in their isolation and live miserable lives dying with their neighbors saying that they were crazy when they were not, they were tortured and they were, and their lives were stolen from them. So, you know, like I said, cognitive dissonance is the absolute opposite of self-preservation. So you need to get over it and you need to quit insulting the people who are trying to tell you and ask yourselves as my sister, my brother, my neighbor, whoever it is, why is it this is the very first time that I've ever seen unusual behavior from them? Have they not always been truthful with me? Have they not always been logical, trustworthy? Um, why now am I doubting them? Is it because my mind is too small to understand what they're saying? Is it because I have my own biases that I can't believe that if I don't know about it, it can't possibly exist? You know, is your, and I don't mean ignorance being the same as stupidity, it's not, but is your ignorance inducing, capable of inducing insanity in another person? No, it's not. It's just that you're ignorant. So open your mind and investigate. And if you're, you're telling the other person that they're crazy and you won't investigate, then you're in self-denial and you're not being honest. I think that's absolutely true, actually. And the one thing I, I, I would like to add is um, 
I am, um, and, and then I speak also for the victims. Uh, we have to, we really have to work hard to break mind control. I am one of those uh, witnesses that I saw. I saw my own parents be taken over neurologically, such that they were screaming at the empty room where I stood before and I had left, both of them simultaneously. So they were both under complete mind control. And since then, I was trying to watch out. And there are subtle uh, things that you can you can tell when you're really watching that there are certain cues and body language and changes in, in facial expression, you can tell that they're being taken over. And I tell you, the more I'm actually observing and looking for signs, it's frightening. I think a lot of brains have been monitored and I think we all had brain chips for a lot longer than we know. Um, not just head chips on the scalp, but actually brain chips. And I think these AI systems have been learning how we think and how we act for a very, very long time. And I think a lot of, especially family members, I think are being taken over first. So victims and others have to be very, um, you know, careful and gentle. But I'm telling you, it is possible to break mind control. It is possible with your loved ones. One of the things that actually helps and people should know that is physical contact. If you just hold somebody's hand, I think the physical contact is also because it's a stimulus. It's a strong stimulus. It brings them back into the presence and you can actually get through to them much better. If you just if it's your mother or your, you know, your siblings and you just put a hand on their shoulder or their, you know, your hand on their hand, you can get through to them much better than otherwise. And I'm telling you, I mean, I'm the first one to realize how very, very urgent it is because just this week there was a murder attempt on my father. And um, I made a video about that, but I would like to announce it here. And I also would like to give the heads up to Intel that that's it. I mean, I revealed that um, it was, well, as far as I know, for sure, German intelligence in the hospital of Baden-Baden, but also British intelligence is involved in my case, certainly since the year 2000, at least. Um, and they have murdered my grandfather in my presence at the hospital in Baden-Baden. I just didn't twig it, but I do twig it now. Um, they murdered my grandmother on the 8th of the 8th of 2008. You know, my grandfather on the very same day as her. Um, and now they, they, they tried to murder my father. They've already attacked my siblings and my mother. They uh, made her fall down. They knocked her flat out in the middle of the night. They made her stand up and knocked her flat out so that she hit her head on the table, blood everywhere. But she fell standing up. She didn't fall out of the bed like she thought because it's impossible to bump your head this hard when the head side ta board side table is level with the bed. So there was already a, you know, a, a, a serious, you know, potential grievous bodily harm attack on my mother and now on my father. And, and this time, one of the things we didn't talk much about, but it features big time with victim cases is not just voice to skull, which is ancient technology, but actually high def movie. So image to skull or video to skull. And there were a couple of times when I did get high definition video to skull. And this time I got it again. And it was three days before they attacked my father. They announced that he's going to collapse doing sport. And he collapsed doing sport exactly three days after. So the three days is again a cartel signaling thing that Dr. Ronnie Kilda talks about. And it's true. It was three days after the death threat. They almost killed me on the motorway. Yes. And, and that was it. So the attack on my father was like, I am finished with you guys. I literally game over, time over, time's up, guys. And now I'm personally going just for death penalties and the death of the heads of Intel. I know that there's an entire tower above the heads of Intel, which belong to the cartel. But if we aim to kill the heads of Intel by civilian court means and orderly death penalties, that's a good start. I think that's going to send a signal. And it can be done. In fact, China has done it. China killed the head of Intel. You know, it can be done um, and it should be done because what these people have done, they, they built up a genocide program. And uh, one of the things that I remind people of is that I personally went to the headquarters of Swiss Intel and I personally spoke to a senior Swiss Intel guy. And he said to my face, of course, jeeringly and mockingly, that he gets a lot of complaints about microwave weapon attacks. And then he alluded to the fact that, well, you know, these things don't just happen from today to tomorrow. They are prepared well in advance. Well, this guy was foolish enough to put it on record. It, he put on record the admission that the Swiss government and Swiss Intel specifically has prepared a genocide. So we now found the genocide numbers on Deagle.com, uh, you know, and that's also up on my website. 
but but that's what we're actually you know facing up to and then Ramola is absolutely right the press is, is involved big time the press has covered up the preparation to genocide uh, which makes them criminally liable these people like the vice documentary guys the new york times with the united states of paranoia this uh new article from what's her face uh you know uh yan uh those are those are criminal acts those are war crimes because you suddenly have people within a country covering up the genocide of another part of the country that is high treason but also i remind people that when a country is taken down like that it's not in the interest not even in the interest of the local cartel so for example it's not in the interest of donald trump or anybody doing business in the us to actually have a genocide of the american population but it is totally in the interest of foreign powers Okay, so as soon as you have this gang stalking program and the due program in your country, you know that you're being controlled by a foreign foreign entity. And this is something I'm I'm trying to tell the Swissies here, because for a long time, traditionally, they were the cartel, they were the headquarters of the cartel, and they killed and murdered and pillaged elsewhere and took the loot to Switzerland, like the Nazi gold, when then it was shipped elsewhere. But this was the main hub. But now when I see gang stalking in the due program here uh, used against Swiss, I just want to tell them, hey, guys, it looks like you are now controlled by a foreign power that moved on. So if you have this genocide program here, ask yourself the question, why does the U.S. have a genocide prediction rate of, what, 83 percent, Switzerland 33 percent, and India as good as zero? Could it be that the cartels are already in India and that's going to be their next leg? You know, that's where they're going to stand whilst they let um, Europe, you know, be ground to dust. So they, they should think about it. And, and you know, I still, I still want to have um, Stephen Shallon back and I want us to have an entire episode where we take the media to shreds and not just to shreds, we should identify the criminals we should charge in court. Mike McFate has already, you know, advanced uh, himself. What's her face? Jan, Lisa, whatever was her name, who wrote that article, you know, um, with, by the way, horrific cartel signaling in the advert, you know, below that that should also be analyzed. And then the newest piece, I even forgot what it was. That was from the also from the New York Times. They didn't even dare to put an author there. They just said by the New York Times. And I tweeted out that article. So it, it shows, you know, I think they understood. But, but if they say the New York Times, we're going for the editor, you know. Sorry, is there another piece by the New York Times? That yeah. that, that, that's more recent. Gosh, yes, it was. What was it again? I tweeted it out a long time ago. And um, oh, what was this about? This was also about targeting. Oh, I know what it was. It was the report from the um, Hope Conference, the Unity and Hope Conference. Do you remember that? There was a newspaper. Oh, I... and, and that is a total... You know, oh, that's the Yan one at Wired, right? I thought she wrote that at Wired. Exactly. That was the Wired one. Oh, yeah, that was Wired. Yes, but then there was another one. Hang on, what was it? Because I remember I even tweeted out the fact that the author didn't appear. I have to go through my tweets. No you know, worries. I'm... Yeah, we can find it if there's we another one. Fine. I am getting ready to totally rip the media apart. You know, I, I know I've been talking about this for such a long time, but I'm waylaid and interrupted by so much else. I mean, the Gerald Sosby interview has come my way. And, you know, so I'm now working on the transcript for that. I need to put that out. That's very, very vital. I want to finish Millicent's article. That's another very vital piece of reportage to get out there. And now Diane Chandler's article, you know, she's a US army whistleblower who was reporting the torture club so incredible whistleblowing um so and you know so and melanie's story as well next week so i want to i'm, I'm going to get this out in the next few days but um but i do want to do um a total takedown of the media because it's very very important um and the reason it's very very important is um the the truth of the situation is actually being hidden from the larger public and that is criminal and we can see it very clearly. Some journalists, you know, can see it. But I'll tell you what, journalists who are still playing in that field, you know, the Democrat, Republican, partisan, part, uh, nonpartisan uh, field out there, you know, it, which is still the field dominated by mainstream media, you know, those journalists are not touching this. They are so afraid. They're either so afraid of being targeted themselves or they're so afraid of um, drawing attention to something that will have them tarred by mainstream media as fringe or conspiracy theorists. 
that they are afraid to touch the subject. That I think is what's going on among the few journalists with spine and integrity out there. You know, they're afraid for a couple reasons. And so literally we who are speaking out are standing on our own. We are the ones who have to take on this burden of informing the world. And uh, you know, I remember you remember Chris Burton and I were thinking of pulling together a journalistic um, outlet where many of us could contribute articles and we're, we're working on that. He's uh, going to finalize that shortly because he's going to actually set it up um, you know, and that would be fantastic if he can set it up and we can all start publishing openly. And that's going to become the new truth media of the, of this century because mainstream media is publishing lies and popcorn, you know, and uh, that's what I want to tell everybody. Um, those, every person who is targeted, every person who is a re reporting victim of these silent state abuses and these uh, military and intelligence agency crimes is a whistleblower. Every one of us is a whistleblower. And I want everybody to start thinking of themselves as a reporter and a whistleblower. If you are reporting these attacks on yourself, you are a reporter. We don't have mainstream media. We can't run after Glenn Greenwald and Jeremy Scahill anymore. We know exactly how they respond and react, and we have already experienced it, okay? Um, we have to become the reporters of this generation. We have to. There's no other way around it. This is the only way to inform the larger public. We are all reporters. We're all whistleblowers. Don't rely on any one of us. Start reporting yourself and report for each other. You know, and once we have this group media thing going, everybody can send in their stories. Everybody can write and everybody can publish because that's what we need. We're living in the day of, you know, mass publishing and group publishing. We should really, really take advantage of it. Well, I was going to say one thing, too. It may be that these reporters are so very elitist, they were given um, the news. Basically, if you cover this up for us, then you'll be part of the elite that survives. Say a word and you and your whole family's gone. So it could be that, you know, part of it is that they think they're going to rise above it and keep their head in the sand and it's not going to affect them if they just cooperate. And we know from Nazi Germany that that was wrong. Those people did not escape. You know, the ones who looked the other way, they didn't escape their country being utterly destroyed out from under them. Um, but I think they've sold their souls to the devil. They basically have agreed to be quiet so that they're left alone, supposedly. Well, we can prove, um, actually, that they are not going to be left alone because... The 83% the being killed off in the U.S. must include, it, it actually must include all the ones whose silence has been bought for the simple reason that after that you still have this, this ever-continuing funnel, opening funnel effect of the information uh, age. So we have ever more networked information, ever faster service, ever faster flow of information around the world. Therefore, after the genocide, the information about who did the genocide is going to be everywhere within, you know, literally seconds around the world. So you can't, you can't hold on in the information age. And the cartel knows that, by the way, in the information age, you cannot hold on to your corrupt people. They have to be killed off as well. So the, the um, you know, actually surviving bit will be the ones who are totally untouched. They are very, very, you know, protected group somewhere living, I don't know what, on Levita Island or wherever. But, um, or maybe in the underground bases. I don't know. They, they are from a parallel society that we haven't, you know, heard about. But if, if you're in the melee here, if your victim or if your corrupt person has been identified, you are going down. So, you know, it doesn't matter. Just like here, my corrupt neighbors in Unterengstringen, these people are so stupid. They think, oh, now they are making a bit of money here from the cartel. And I can tell them exactly where the money is coming from. Those are the billions stolen from social insurance. So these people are so moronic that what the cartel does in Switzerland is it pays them with their own money back that has just been stolen from the social services. And then they think, okay, they are going to survive. And they ignore the fact that exactly half of the radiation hits them back in the face. So that's in the due attacks. It's already built in that the attacker is going to be killed off with the, with the victim so because of the radiation. Okay, here, what is this microphone? Hi, so Melissa. Attacks. 
Hey, Millicent, we're getting feedback from you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's good to see you, Millicent. Um, it's um, the one of the things. Uh, you can get a handle on the control room app. Yes, let me open it either. Yeah, it's like today it's taken over by other powers. So could you want to say, please, you know, you regain control from Randy Webster, please. Is the NSA capable of this digital feat? Maybe. <laughs> because we want to hear Millicent. And when she comes back on, I want her high there. Yeah. And yes. Hello, and and NSA, try to find your white hat somewhere, maybe in the janitor closet. Exactly. <laughs> Try to find the remaining people who actually work for NSA because they can program and not because they're taking part of the, you know, in the pedophile parties, you know, do you have any? <laughs> Maybe it's registered in some sort of database who they are. Try to find them. But it's, um, yeah, it's embarrassing. Um, actually, the one thing I wanted to say is that the, the journalists are a massive part. But the other thing I want to take on this year big time because I'm writing my um, my personal story of the affidavit for my court case, and I'm going back further and further in time. And as the memories come back, I realize, oh, I was already targeted at CERN. Oh, yes, yes, I nearly collided with that driverless car. Suddenly, these memories come back, and then I realize, oh, yeah, I was already gang-stalked in my first week at Oxford. Of course, I now remember. So I have been actually a target throughout my entire Oxford time, but this means I'm most likely a biomedical slave of Oxford. And that made me question what Oxford actually is. And I think the other pillar we should really tackle this year is the researchers, because our data is going somewhere. And at some point in the investigation, we have to go there. And actually, it's great that Millicent came on because Millicent, I think, went the furthest in tracking down who was using her data. Hi, Millicent. Can you hear us? Can you hear us, Millicent? Millicent, can you hear us? I'm going to inject real quickly here. Um, since we've talked about signaling, I've done things like this during this program because I told uh, Ramola I would do that when I couldn't hear her. <laughs> so I am not doing cartel signaling. I'm trying to <laughs> yes, tell Ramola I'm... that her audio is not working. And and we discussed this before we started. You know, we are, we are borrowing a little bit from uh, the cartel here uh, just for audio issues related to Webster. Yeah, just to, just to be in their face, really. Maybe we should take cartel signaling back, you know, and then... <laughs> <laughs> Overwrite it with different meaning and then hijack their own messaging system, you know. <laughs> Millicent, hi, can you hear us? Her um, microphone is muted, but, um, you know, I can't use the control room over here is at all. I don't know what's going on. You know, they must have messed with my computer once again. I'm going to have to call my tech guys once again. I do that frequently. And Ramola, I think you should just call the NSA straight, you know. <laughs> it's like, why go via India, you know? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Support, you know, <laughs> tech support group. Just call the NSA. Seriously. Okay, okay. Here's, here's something. All right. For NSA, it is 301-688 and then pick the last four numbers because they're all NSA. Have fun. <laughs> Your audio got delayed. Your audio got delayed, Ramola. That was a massive highlight, you know. <laughs> yes, we've got the number. I've got it written down now. <laughs> Everybody in America, hope you heard that. <laughs> to reach the NSA, I will be calling them frequently from now on. <laughs> With. My like I said, just pick any four numbers on the end of 301-688. That's NSA. Mm -hmm. You know, I always like to talk to people first and ask them, you know, if they'd like to give me information of their own free will. Um, of course, not many do, but... 
<laughs> not when they're in these dark agencies. But uh, no harm in asking. Yeah. And you know, if you've got four digits, like you know, you've got you've got nine hundred ninety nine, nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine options. Different yeah. depths of latitude. Keep calling. Do you get the right person? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, wouldn't it be a bad thing that you tell a certain story to a lot of people and then they say, oh, we don't handle it there. And then they get to talk about the odd phone call they got at lunchtime with five or six other friends <laughs> who pass it around their offices. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I love that idea. So you just call up the so possible, possibly existent remaining residual white hats at the NSA and uh, talk to them and say, so what on earth is your organization doing? And why aren't you stopping what's going on? Anti-American, communist, globalist, horrific activities are going on in America. We need some, we need some help here. Exactly. And I did see an article that said that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, NSA was losing people right and left because they're embarrassed to be working for them with all of this coming out. They're laterally, laterally transferring to other agencies. Very interesting. Although, which agency could they possibly transfer to where they would be inviolate from this storm, you know, when it breaks utterly? Um, you know, and this actually brings me back to the issue that I want to go back to all the time is the horrific nature of these weapons. And what you mentioned earlier, Catherine, you, you asked the question, are we going to be at the point where, you know, just, or was it you, Karen, one of you asked this question, are we going to be at the point where if, if you have a certain thought, then somebody five miles away can direct a weapon at you and hit you because you had that thought? That's actually happening right now, isn't it? People are being hit. Thought crimes, uh, predictive policing, it, it's already here. Thought crime monitor thought monitoring is already here. And by these criminals with weapons who are daring to say that they are monitoring the brains of suspected terrorists, um, you see, because that's how those who are targeted are being mischaracterized. So, and they're already hitting people. When people do things, when you write an article, for instance, as I do frequently, I get hit massively with um, microwave pulse shots from above, seemingly from a satellite or a drone or an antenna or somewhere, or horizontally, possibly from a neighbor's house, or from the street, from one of those zooming cars. You see? And... I hope this is all can I hope so. but, uh, it's it's an important and critical importance that people learn from us because who else is speaking about it that this kind of thing is indeed going on that the AIs and the electronic control system are hooked in together and they are being um, pointed at certain people and the populace but and this actually brings me towards something that you brought up Catherine was about um people being hit who are elders, elder trafficking. You did a couple of videos recently on elder trafficking, right? And and I've heard many reports too. Many people who are older as seniors are being hit with these weapons. So the weapons that I was hit with last night, if in the hands of the local police, the local FBI, InfraGuard, and the local thug or the local minion acting for these agencies, um, if in their hands, it is now in their hands to be used criminally as a weapon to be used against anybody. And think about all our seniors uh, recording higher of dementia and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, you know. I am convinced that it's already happening. People are being hit left, right and center with these weapons because these weapons exist. And who can prove that they're not being used against everybody, you know, in all of the local senior villages and senior condominiums, right? I, I, and yeah. I, also, 
I, I also have this creeping suspicion that Alzheimer's and, and, and Parkinson's and other um, neurodegenerative diseases are actually due induced and maybe it's due in combination with nanotech that um, cross the blood brain barrier. Because I know, for example, back in uh, Transylvania, um, you know, a long, long time ago, we do not have, we did not have these uh, neurodegenerative diseases, certainly not at this rate. So I do not believe for a second that they are natural. I, I really think, and the, the one thing that you said was, um, actually, may I just point you to two things? I just would like to share my screen very briefly, because I would now that you mentioned elder trafficking, I would like to point people to a new um, series of interviews I did with Wednesday Kennedy that's here. So that's the newest interview. I've just made it um, public eight hours ago. It's elderly kidnap and monarch programming. And Wednesday Kennedy went through the Monarch programming program in, in the media. And there's a very emotional interview with her that we're going to continue. And now her mother has been kidnapped, um, literally kidnapped, pretty much like Melanie's baby was kidnapped by Hospital Erasmus in Brussels. Her mother was kidnapped by the um, Holy Spirit care home, care home in inverted commas, in uh, Sydney. Um, so she's trying to get her mother back, and um, that is very, 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 very important. But I'm um, actually talking about um, hits to the head. I said it last time, but I'm going to say it one more time. I made two videos, so um, a two-hour video that I recorded during the night. Um, that's actually for court use, and this two-hour video is linked from the 12-minute short compilation, and I managed to record um, that a shot is passing through several layers of metal. And I just would like to play the short clip to, to highlight that for court use, you can actually, using metal, you can make shots visible. You know, I'm not sure if it sh I showed this on the show before, but this is now, um, let me just make this loud. Um, so this is the, um, this is the attack on me. Um, at night, I film between 2.30 a.m. to 4.30 a.m. And you can actually see metal being moved by a shot like that. So let me just play this. And look at the file here. So did you see that there's a quick repeat? Um, and then this you can actually, you know, did you see this? So on the video, you can actually see how this is being uh, moved. But um, imagine having that sort of shot straight to your head, okay? So I think a lot of these neurological diseases can be brought about by just repeated shots to the head. And one of the things I would like to pass the microphone to Millicent because I can hear that her microphone is on. One of the things I mentioned to uh, Wednesday Kennedy, Millicent, is um, your research, which is that um, you were told, um, was it an FBI agent who said that there's a, there's a very large market in porn that is based on the abuse of people in their you know, 70s and their 80s and so on. So actually elderly, these elderly um, care homes can also be used for sex trafficking. And Wednesday Kennedy had the feeling that her mother is being abused because her mother was, first of all, put onto a mixed ward where you have, as she put it, these um, demented masturbators. <laughs> you basically have these guys who've got dementia and are, are just in hyperdrive, you know. And you have defenseless, vulnerable women. You know, it's a nightmare. It's an absolute insanity. And I think this entire setup in the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit care home is totally intentional. Are these psychopaths? Catherine, I actually said that um, I was told by a woman, actually a former Air mm -hmm. Force sergeant who lived up in the Northeast, that she complained to department, two police officers at least. Those two told her that there's actually a high market for women her age in her age range, and she was in her for sex, for prostitution or sex trafficking. Um, I wanted to comment about the the dementia and the re relating to my mother, mother. She has had a bald spot in the crown of her head about the size of a small saucer for at least the last 10 years. I took her to the pharmacist that runs a, um, well, y'all know what that is, don't you? That runs a uh, health food store that in, in Alabama where I go to get biofeedback scans. I actually took her down there to get a, a biofeedback scan.
skin. And I showed him her head and he said that's brain damage to her hypothalamus. I'm in total agreement that um, the symptoms of dementia and Alzheimer's is definitely induced, DEW induced. There was something else that you all were talking about earlier coming on and that's gotten a little up again. I do want to report, though, that I've just finished my physical therapy uh, on my, my leg. And though the leg itself is healing well, I want you in shot in the surgical area of my leg. So he is trying to not just uh, reduce the amount of appropriate healing, but the shooting would also then tend down and reverse the my leg that I have been doing for the last almost six weeks. So it's just like you do. I had to salt was done to the bone in my leg and to the prosthesis itself. Um, then I was threatened once I once I scheduled surgery. I was threatened that if I went through with the surgery. I would be murdered to have the surgery because of the damage that was done. Uh, I was threatened to not be allowed to recover. I am recovering. Action is being taken to reverse the amount of progress that I've made. This is insanity at its worst. It really is. And actually, it's shocking. I, I really, what I want to do is ramp up the campaign for you, Millicent. And um, I'm, I'm ready to actually go to the next level now. So I, I just would like to share my screen and remind people what the campaign for Millicent is. Please go to my website, Stop007, and go to support our fighters. Here you have um, the five ladies on the team. And on Millicent's page, there's an entire um, list of people here at the top. Contact these people. And these people are listed further below. You can see Millicent's story. But these are the officials who we have to contact. Um, and I now, after I actually listened to the calls I made to Chief Potts and Captain Potts at um, uh, Police in Columbia, I actually am advocating the removal of Tim Potts and Troy Potts because I listened to the call again and actually the phone call I had to Troy Potts and that's after you sent several diary entries about a year ago to Troy Potts about your abuse, I'm on the phone to try pots and I say, have you heard about the case of Millicent Black? And he said, this guy Gideon so-and-so uh, or so-and-so Gideon was the, um, the agent in charge and he left. And I knew that was ages ago. And I said, did you receive any further information? And he says, no. And at that time, you had CC'd me in on several of your daily journals that you sent to Chief Potts and um, Captain Potts. And I knew that Captain Potts was lying. He was lying and it's, I now have the audio recording. So we just have to publish the actual diary entries that were sent to Troy Potts probably the day on the day or the day before. And I can prove that this man was lying to me on the phone when he claimed he knew nothing about your case. And that's the very same phone call where he's also laughing about the fact that you've got a doctorate. Well, I think you, country bumpkin who know nothing, you can't even do your job. How dare you? How dare you, you know, talk like that? I'm absolutely furious. And I think that phone call alone should be enough to actually have him uh, removed because he can be proven to be lying about a case that's extremely serious. And that to me proves that Chief Potts and Captain Potts are both involved in the human trafficking here. And, and you know what I also think, and this is going to be tying in with all the children again, I think, Millicent, the research you did uncovering um, the Mount Pleasant School, um, you know, uh, scandal, I, I call it a scandal, the, the awning above the school uh, showing, you know, the, the Air Force wings and also these uh, crosses that look like a military mm -hmm. graveyard where you said that it's probably a terminal program that they got all the kids on. Well, I think also if that's happening at Mount Pleasant School, then surely the police and the FBI must be involved in the trafficking of those children as well. 
So I think what we should be um, aiming for now that we're moving to take down these corrupt people is to actually have these people charged with um, conspiracy to, um, you know, to take part in human trafficking. So I actually and, encourage everybody you know, to writing to those politicians making that point. I would just like to add one thing to that, um, Catherine, is that, you know, these two police officers, the chief and the detective over there, his son, um, if, you know, I know you're, there is a supposition, certainly, that they are part of this crime ring that they are seeking to cover for, you know, this pedophile ring. Yes, entirely possible. But it's also possible that they are deliberately keeping quiet because they're kind of conceding or receding to the hidden authority, the hidden hand of the other higher-ups in their group, you know, whether it's the Masonics in the police force or the Masonics among the feds. I guess you should call them Masons, right? I call them the Masonics, the, um, the the Freemasons among the feds, the local FBI, because you did not receive, I know Karen and you called the FBI several times on Millicent's behalf and you did not receive any kind of response from them, right? Any kind of callback, any kind of interest about um, a US Air Force veteran using military grade technologies that included BCI systems and satellites on a yeah. person in the air jurisdiction very no disinterested right yeah like i said yeah. it just i i think it didn't fit into their box so they couldn't uh fathom it didn't bother with it either that or they're perfectly aware they're perfectly cognizant they perfectly know and the facade they're projecting is it doesn't fit in their box you know this isn't something we touch and again this goes back to media you know we're all going to pretend these weapons don't exist we're all going to pretend that uh, we are not using them and we're going to keep them well, hidden we, under classified and secrecy labels. Right, right. But it, we're also in a constitutional crisis where some of the laws passed after 9-11, which of course was hardly a surprise attack. Um, these laws were meant to be uh, skewed and perverted in order to uh, establish the police state and the state of emergency was supposed to go on forever and ever and ever and therefore um, have the constitution basically pushed to the side for the emergency state and to let all kinds of corporatocracy criminals get away with uh, whatever they wish to do. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. And th that's what I'm pointing to. There's a network of criminals here. There's a network of criminals working inside the agencies, you know, and I'm sorry, at this point in time, we do not say anymore. It's like, you know, there may be, I think we know by now, we're pretty certain the agencies are operating in criminal ways. They are executing crime on civilian populations. They're, they're really predating on populations. They're predating on the population in Mount Pleasant, Tennessee and in Columbia, Tennessee, you know, and they're predating on the body of Dr. Mellison Black via Randy Webster, who appears to be protected at a very, very high level, which really makes you wonder who he is and what he represents to this coterie of criminals. And, you know, this is where we also bring in some of the analysis that you've been doing, Catherine, and others have been doing. This is, there's a lot of Satanism going on. Randy Webster has confessed to Dr. Mellison Black that he's a Satanist. He's a misogynist. He likes hurting women. And he wants to kill women. And indeed, there are many, many dubious deaths around Dr. Mellison's family and in Ms. Dr. Mellison's town um, that in some ways, I think um, Randy Webster via V2K has actually laid claim to, some of which he's laid claim to. So... It's Ramona, a huge, thank it's, you for it's saying via. Sure. Why V2K? Yes. Right. Thank you for saying that. Um, the other thing, someone made a statement that I read or heard last night, and that is when or a city's population is actually having a minus increase, pretty you can be pretty sure that a genocidal program is going on there. Have you all heard any? Some, I, I heard it just last night into my hometown and even possibly this county, just wondering what our population growth looks like. I know that the town next door to us is, is just taken off and it used to be, gee, just a very small town, but it 
it's just taken off and there are houses and people are moving in. But I just wonder what the population growth looks like in our town and now, given the, the happening here. That's a good question. We can definitely look into that, Melissa. We can look at the numbers of, um, you know, deaths and the, the rate of births versus deaths. Um, and I'm sure that kind of information is available from the census, etc. So definitely worth looking at. So um, I should actually just say, give everybody a heads up. We're kind of look, I'm looking at the time. We should probably bring this discussion to a close. So if people wanted to go around and, you know, share their final thoughts, et cetera, that would be great. Yes, I guess the only thing I would like to say today is that I'm finishing finally this long promised letter to the neighbors tonight. Um, I'm going to start the neighborhood campaign and I'm going to identify, I mean, certainly I will be sending lists of my, the names of my neighbors the team uh, and I think other people should do the same thing so all the victims I think should go around and note down right, I'm just looking feedback just, 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 um, just go go around and um, I had um, so I, maybe you guys remember that um, I had an assassination attempt on on me uh, when I went to the high court that was announced and then that night a black plastic life-sized goat went up on the flat roof opposite my home and that goat was there for two years and then the goat disappeared when I went around with my mobile phone and I photographed all the post boxes to get the names of my neighbors because I'm going to be writing personal net letters to all the homes that have a direct line of sight onto my property and that was the the point where this next door neighbor I mean how stupid do you have to be you know she could have gone on saying oh well you know it's Switzerland we just like goats okay it's my favorite black goat plastic statue, you know, but no, she was stupid enough to put it up when I had a death, uh, you know, uh, just a murder attempt on me and take it down when I'm photographing the, um, you know, the, the post boxes. So she basically just stamped guilty on her forehead. But it does leave an impression when you go around and they notice that they personally, by name, will be identified. And one of the things I would like to say about the neighborhood campaign is, yes, go around Go on to Google Maps, look at all the homes that have a direct line of sight onto your property or onto your flat. Um, in, in case of flats, remember uh, neighbors below you and diagonally from the sides, all the neighbors around you, write down their names. If you can't identify where the pulse shots are coming from, it doesn't matter because it's not the duty of Holocaust victims to actually do the forensics. OK, so it's not your job. Just get a list of names. And then at the end of the day, in discovery, we can ask the intel agencies because they paid these people. They trained them. They gave them the weapons and they paid them. OK, and we've got the affidavit or the, the interview by Carl Clark. And I'm sure he's willing to write an affidavit where he said he witnessed people from Intel use the weapons on, on others, on innocent people. He was there in the room and he saw that this was going on. So Intel knows who our attackers are. So we don't need to do the forensics. We have to just request a money trail from them. I just ask them straight in court, who did you pay? Because look, I'm measuring the shots here. Someone must have fired them. I announced it to you. You know, I asked for a, an injunction. So who did you pay? You tell me, you know. It's not our job to do all this. So go around, write down the names and maybe make an entire list and pass it to friends and family. Should something happen to you, we're still going to get these people. We just need their list, you know, the, the list of names and you know their address because they're your neighbors. So that that those lists should be should be done. They are part of the campaign. And that's one part of taking down these local criminals, you know, and they are actually easy pickings because they are sitting ducks. They are they are sitting at a registered address, you know, trying to catch one of these mobile due units is harder. But your neighbors, pff, I mean, that's really low hanging fruit. I want to add in what I had thought about earlier when Ramola was talking about thought patrol there is documented the John North scene under contract with the with the Navy for paid by Lockheed by Lockheed Martin no by NASA paid by NASA did develop thought injection thought injection says that a thought can be taken from a person's mind reworked and put back in their minds before they ever know it was gone so that just kind of 
throws all of this thought patrol out of the window. And I can tell you that I am a victim of continuous thought injection. In fact, in 2003, I was told that they were going to use my brain against me. And they can use my brain because there's direct access to put in to inject thoughts into my head. And I, now I fight that all the time. I have constant um, thought injection going on. I can show you the patents that allow it. In fact, they uh, that is considered a part of remote neural monitoring. How about that? Someone can talk to you in your head, can put thoughts in your head, have those thoughts recorded and examined by a fusion center as yours when you when even the people in the fusion center know that they aren't. The good thing about it, though, is that if they really wanted to compare to who you are, go back 10 years, go back 15 years. Were these thought processes going on in your brain at that point? If they weren't, then more than likely you're either a victim of thought reform or you're a victim of thought injection. Yeah, we are living in 1984 and beyond. And, you know, that is an absolute fact. Thank you so much, Millicent, for bringing up that valuable information uh, of, about thought injection and John Norseen's uh, The Shocking Menace of Satellite Surveillance, etc. Um, you know, thought injection and thought reform thought modification is something, as you know, the CIA had certainly been working on for many, many decades. Um, and um, they thought they could achieve it with LSD and with um, creating altars, etc. And now they're, they're probably doing all of that as well. Uh, now they've um, moved to electromagnetic weapons and they are using radio hypnosis and electronic dissolution of memory and so on and so forth. And there are so many methodologies of uh, neurological takeover and brain entrainment and so on and so forth. So the technology is here and uh, we believe the technology is being used. It's being kept secret. It's being kept classified and we're here to actually expose it. So this is my other uh, series of articles. You know, as you know, Omni is reporting exactly what you are reporting, Melissa, that uh, he is being neurally framed. So images and thoughts are being pumped into his head and somebody else from the other side is looking at them and looking and uh, monitoring them, so to speak, and uh, framing him as being the uh, progenitor of these thoughts when in actuality um, they are being pumped in as well. So I'm hearing um, feedback again from somebody's that from me. I think you were getting that from me because I was wanting to actually cite, there is a Supreme Court decision that's been made for a man named, he was a dentist named Sale, S-E-L-L. -L. I think it's Sale versus, uh, I think it's the United States versus Sale. Uh, they were wanting to try him uh, for a, a murder and he was deemed un uh stand trial. And the only way they, said they could get him to stand trial was that he would be forced to take psychotropic drugs. But the Supreme Court ruled that they could not force this man to take psychotropic drugs in order for him to be in trial. And they call it the free decision. Sorry, they call it the what? So, freedom of thought. Yes, excellent. Oh, for course you, that's, that's gold. Thank you, Melissa. I've just I've just typed it into um, Wikipedia and Cell versus United States is on Wikipedia. That's wonderful. Great link. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I also, fabulous. I also would like to flag. I want to flag one thing, and that's um, Millicent's audio has picked up. So actually, it is worth complaining directly to the NSA here on the show, and it takes them about it looks like twenty minutes to half an hour, you know, to actually get this act together. But it works. Because <laughs> so we should, we you, know, I, number, you know, you know. We should. And, you know, I just had a brainwave. I think perhaps we should remind the NSA that we are working in the national security here. We are attempting to safeguard populations from gruesome military technologies that are highly invasive. And if you think about it, think about it from the national security point of view. If any one of us had state secrets, and, you know, there are apparently people, you know, with top secret clearances working in these agencies, right? And they do have access to state secrets, so-called state secrets, um, you know, important technologies, important to the national security of the nation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these guys, if their heads can be, you know, injected and monitored and read at a moment's will, whim, um, what price uh, the safeguarding of brain security and brain privacy, etc.? You know, clearly anybody's brain can be probed by anybody else who has access to these weapons. 
So has the NSA thought about that? You know? Really? No, they didn't, Ramula, because they got thought injected. <laughs> they got thought injected to instead have sex with the secretary, you know, with the uh, the office hall and promote her. I think that's what that has been happening. Yeah, unfortunately, they seem to have been sleeping on the job over here, you know, working so hard on their remote neuro monitoring. Did they not think the Russians would have it and the Chinese would have it and the Indians would have it? And, you know, the local platypus on the Australian island of whatever has it too. So uh, they were they were they were sleeping with the job, Ramola, not sleeping on the job. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So you see, the, the the very important point to be made here is that um, we are people standing up for humanity and standing up for our nation, nations and standing up for national security. And therefore, if there are any white hats out there in the NSA listening, you know, they could do us all a favor by helping us just continue our conversations openly. On which note... <laughs> Perhaps I should. Um, oh, actually, Karen, we haven't heard from you. Did you want to offer any last? So thoughts? we had talked. Yeah, we had talked about this before the program. Um, you can go on to the White House um, site and send President Trump an email. And I do believe we were talking about the fact that probably Kellyanne Conway actually reads them and then tells him if he needs to know something or not. So I was suggesting that people write a short respectful letter saying i am and and if you want to use targeted individual i suggest you put wrongfully or illegally targeted individual you know i'm somebody who's known as a wrongfully targeted individual i am being targeted by and put dhs slash fbi slash fusion center and infraguard vigilantes comma, et cetera, you know, because some of these vigilantes call themselves some, something else, say that I am being targeted, I am being actually uh, slandered in my neighborhood, in my town, and I am being attacked with, and then tell them poisons and gases, or um, neural monitoring, or illegal chips, or directed energy weapons, and I know this is illegal and unconstitutional. I want it to stop now. And then you have registered pretty much as a victim of this deep state. So I suggest that everybody do it. I know. Perhaps also use the keyword human trafficking and point to the executive orders that Trump has brought out. And in case you need reminding which executive orders um, they are, sorry, I'm just going to be quick. I'm just going to share my screen. You will find the um, executive orders if you go to my website under burn, burning down the house of crime here and our campaigns, the memo to Trump campaign, which I'm totally convinced uh, actually triggered this. Um, you will find Executive Order 13818. Uh, 18. Exactly. And then also that, that you can point to the fact that January was, um, you know, Human Trafficking Prevention Month, also on the orders of Trump. And please spell out that the human trafficking is being carried out by the local fusion center. It's being carried out by the local PD, police department. It's being carried out by the local FBI and the local FBI informants who are selling people into these programs. This is human trafficking. When, uh, when an American citizen or a Swiss citizen or a German citizen is sold into a military non-consensual experimentation project, that is human trafficking. And every president should know it. And to, to echo what Ke Karen was um, talking about, something that we mentioned before we started this conversation uh, publicly, That is indeed red. red. Well, here we have our golden opportunity. So, you know, maybe I will start my 365 letters to President Trump after all. And, um, you know, I invite everybody else to join me as well. Just send three lines to him every day and mention who you are, mention where you are, give you exact location, you know, mention which region, which district, which state you are in. Name the people right there, you know, name the FBI special agents in charge right there. Name, um, you know, the chief of police right there. Name the local police chiefs, the local mayor. Name everybody and state that you have become a victim of FBI um, defamation, slander and um, targeting campaigns which have human trafficked you into 
apparently non-stop 24 7 um great electromagnetic um, operation and experimentation projects you know so let's uh, let's inundate uh, mr president over there and see what comes of it you can call it cointel pro 2.0 because cointel pro was what the the um, fbi did to the women's movement and to the civil rights movement in the 60s to try to sabotage their leadership um, trying to slander them as anything they could think of so that people would not listen to them, and actually trying to get people to commit suicide. So this is COINTELPRO 2.0 that basically went underground and has been brought out full, for, full force and um, aided by technology. So it's uh, COINTELPRO 2.0 on steroids is what it really is. And it also... Um, fulfills the UN agenda to basically eradicate humans for no particular reasons, just just to kill them, you know, to get rid of yes. them. So yeah. any way you want to put that, you know, put you know, put that in, put human trafficking, you know, but get their attention, do it short, respectfully, and just say, I'm one of these people. I don't appreciate it. I'm an innocent American. I know I still have my constitutional rights, and I demand them. And and. and you know, I Sorry, just just a small footnote. If you're writing, um, there's also precedent for the Americans using um, views on on uh, you know activists abroad because uh, um, in Britain, um, the the American embassy used directed energy weapons, microwave weapons, on the protesters on Greenham Common, and there the women developed breast cancer and died of cancer, so that they had high cancer rates. So that's already a, a precedent that can be quoted as well. And, and this is against the laws of war. It's against the laws of war and the, you know, it's uh, basically with the um, treaties across the world. You don't use weapons of war on non-armed, non-combatants, period, period. And I don't even know that directed energy weapons have been okayed by the Geneva Convention in war, you know. So they're totally illegal to use, certainly on civilians and very likely even on soldiers. These are crimes and they're being used, you know, as weapons of torture. And I believe torture is still illegal in America and in the world, right? Isn't torture illegal? Yes, yes. So, you torture. know, basically treaties have been signed saying we won't uh, do that. And yet we're, we are. Yeah, and that we can lay at the FBI's door. The FBI is engaging in programs of torture against American civilians. That is the most anti-American activity I ever heard of. And as I said before, you know, and that's my last word, um, I'm going to be exposing the FBI to the max uh, extent that I can. So on that note, um, everybody stay tuned for all of our articles and so forth. And by the way, if you're writing to the White House, please quote articles that Catherine has on her website, videos she has on her website, that I have on my website, um, you know, articles. And also check out Dr. Eric Karlstrom's website. He's got a bunch of information on there, lots of analyses, lots of articles. Um, uh, what are his websites? Gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.org, 911nwo.org, and... Um, naturalclimatechange.org. Those are the three ones that I do know. I know he has others as well. Um, so, you know, these are people who are collecting information. There's also freedomsos.com. Um, Spencer Carter is collecting information and writing articles. Please uh, look up these websites, pick up these articles, and, and send these links to president and so on and so forth. And, you know, really, we're here to educate the public. We need to let the world public know until everybody in the world knows exactly what's going on um start speaking out so on that note i wish everybody and um all good day or good evening <laughs> and uh we'll see you next time bye-bye